We'll call this meeting to order. First item on the agenda is the acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Second. The agenda has been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. The next item is the discussion of the Hammer Rock Beach boundaries. Uh, before we get into a full-blown discussion, uh, I've talked to a lot of people in regards to this issue. I am fully convinced we can resolve it to everyone's satisfaction. Or to, I, we can resolve it tonight. I'm not sure we resolve anything to everyone's satisfaction, but tonight we will resolve that issue. It is not a complicated issue from the town's point of view. It's a very simple, clear issue, and I just ask you all to put aside the stories and the rumors and the things you've heard on the street and listen tonight, and I think you'll leave here uh, fully understanding the town's position. A brief background, uh, Mr. McDonough came to the town uh, a couple of years ago, <coughs> a year and a half ago, uh, after doing some research on his property and surrounding properties, uh, and, and saying that, in effect, and Mr. McDonough can correct me if I'm wrong, that his deeds and his research show that he owned the land in front of his house and along the neighboring houses uh, that joined with him in this effort to, to prove their ownership, I guess. Uh, he came to the town, the town agreed last year, last early part of the summer, to put up signs at the end of the summer. Public beach ends here. Uh, the public beach consisting of about three, exactly 300 feet of beach where it's always been, where it's been for the past 50 years. The town is very, very satisfied. We will continue to, to maintain that 300 feet of beach. We will continue to have lifeguards down on the beach. We will continue to clean the beach. We, we, we are very happy and proud to have the beach there so all our citizens uh, can enjoy it. Nothing has changed on the town's end. I repeat that. Nothing has changed on the town's end. The signs were knocked down through vandalism or something. They will not go back up. Is my understanding is they will not go back up. Next year and the year after and hopefully years to come, the beach will be exactly the way it was last year, the year before, and for the past 40 or 50 years. That's the town's position. I, I think it's pretty clear. I, I, I think it's pretty cut and dry. Uh, I know there's been a lot of rumors and et cetera, et cetera, but as I say, I've looked at this and I've studied it. I've gone down there and I've talked to people, and I think that's that's my position anyway. Let's put it that way. I'll open it up to the board for discussion. Or anyone has anything to add or change or John. So people that buy stickers will be able to go to any part of the beach that they went to last year, the year before, and so on. And those people that might go to a certain spot that might have was guarded last year will be guarded again that, next year. That 300 feet, yep, yep. Okay. I think that I think the lifeguards put up red flags at each end of the beach, just signifying where the lifeguard coverage is. So I, I imagine that will happen again. And that that's 150 feet roughly each side. Each side of the open. Total of 300 feet. Yes. Let me just make sure, Marilyn, that the board's finished. That's, I guess, by the looks of it, that's our position. If there's anyone has any questions or uh, comments, feel free to bring them up now. Marilyn, you raise your hand. Yes, um, I'm Marilyn Howe. I own Sands End Cafe, and um, obviously, it's been a, a, a source of concern for many of my patrons that what the, they have enjoyed for generations may now be restricted because the consensus is that the freedoms that they enjoyed previously of, an, of walking along the beach in Hummerock will now be restricted. My understanding is Mr. McDonough and any other private uh, property owner that boarded the beach does in fact have the right, should I choose to put my beach chair 
on his property to ask me to leave. Um, at that point, I, of course, have the right to either leave or not leave, and then it would be back in Ms. McDonough or any private property owner who chose to do it to call the Sidua police and have that enforced to have me removed. Am I understanding that? So far, you are correct. Okay, so that will be something that we no longer or previously did not have to endure. So, in fact, I, I understand the town's position, and I'm, and I'm glad that that is your stance in the, uh, it will continue to be, to have the lifeguards. But in fact, it has changed for the citizens of Pomerock. No longer can they walk along the beach unimpeded should those property owners choose to ask them to get off their property. I, I, I hear you and I, I agree with you and if any anyone has a, a uh, issue with walking on the beach uh, they should take it up with Mr. McDonough and with the rest of those property owners it has nothing to do with us it, and I understand Mr. McDonough actually uh, supplied me with some reading material which did in fact say very much what you were saying I just want to make clear that although the town's position is what it is and I understand mm -hmm. why it is it has in fact changed for the general public if those private property owners choose to ask them to get off of their property. And again, I will repeat, you are correct, and that's an issue between you or the walkers or whoever it is, or the people who go sit at the beach to take up with Mr. McDonough and whoever else uh, is involved in this claiming of this property. Rip. Yeah, just to follow up on that, there's an um, excellent article in the ledger by by Patrick here that's got some key quotes from Mr. Norton. So if you're interested in seeing this in writing in advance of the minutes, that I think summarizes it, it, it very well. Um, this is not a quote, but the article says, any dispute about who owns the beach outside the 300-foot public area is a private matter, Norton said. Now here's a quote from, from Joe. It's not our issue. If a beachfront owner feels it's his private property, he can tell people to get off. If the people walking on the beach feel it is not his property, they can say, I'm not getting off. So it's clearly between those individuals outside that 150 feet each way. Further discussion? Tom McCusker. Tom. If you're walking down a beach and that beach has been walked on for last hundred years is that private owner had the right to stop you. I mean I know it's not the town but what would the police do? Yeah. Uh I would hope the police would give, if someone was walking on the beach or someone was down there on a blanket with their two young children on a hot 90 degree day, and I would hope the police would, if they got a call, would give it the attention it deserves. Because don't you have the right one that's pathway? Whatever, whatever, that, whatever that is. Go ahead. Don't you have a right to pass once at once? I believe you have, a, a, again, the right to fouling and walk. Uh, walking, I'm not sure, but again, with all due respect, it's not our issue. We are, more, we are interested in the, the, the public beach, the 300 feet, and beyond that, if someone has a, 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 an issue, they can take it up with whoever causes that issue. In that case, if you're in front of Mr. McDonough's house, it would be Mr. McDonough. Marilyn, I'm going to ask a few other, sure. get everyone to speak first once. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I'm a, I own property on the beach as well. Yeah. I'm just curious about the streets just with a, a layout with a point street. Point of order, we need your name and address, sir. Kenneth O'Brien. And your address? 48 Ocean Drive. Thank you. And may I ask, it's a quick clarification, we say you own property. Are you within the 150 feet each way, or are you outside of that 150 feet? I'm, I'm outside. I'm, Thank you. I'm really curious Thanks. because you Go basically ahead. made a statement that says the town is only interested in the 150 north and south of the opening period, and we're going to stay out of everything else. That's your statement, I think. As far as this beach issue is concerned, yeah, if you're yeah. talking about plowing the streets or something, I mean, I certainly didn't mean that. No, I didn't get to that part yet. Go ahead. <laughs> yet. <Yeah. laughs> yeah, right. okay. <laughs> so these streets are all laid out that run yep. up to the seawall, and if I understand correctly, 
the, the beachfront property owners don't own that little strip of land that constitutes <coughs> an access to the beach at the end of the street. So are you telling me that there's a little spot at the end of each street that is uncontrolled? No, nope, I'm not saying that. I will repeat again what I said. Uh, we are talking here about 300 feet of supervised beach, the same 300 feet that's been supervised for the past 50 years. We're not talking about anything outside of that 300. So you have no opinion on that? Then. No. It's okay. <clears throat> Mr. O'Brien, we can't. I mean, in order to figure that out, you have to do title examinations. You could have private rights of easements. I don't know what street you're, or not you, but other people could have. What the board's <coughs> saying is that we, we can assure the people, the town of Situate, when you go down to Hummer Rock Beach, these are the parameters that we can clearly define and say, you have every right to be there, okay? With respect to everybody else, uh, Mr. McCusker, frankly, I don't know whether Mr. McDonough is going to be able to tell people to get off the property because, frankly, this could have been people could be walking across the beach for the past 30 years. It's, a, it's an issue of whether or not he's lost his right to be able to kick people off the property. What the town's telling, trying to tell you is that you can go down to this beach that we've demarked between the two boundaries, and that's a public beach. And outside of that, you know, it, it's going to turn into private rights litigation, if that's what it is, what have you. But we're just trying to tell you that, you know, an issue was raised by Mr. McDonough. And one thing that the town is saying is these are the lines. You can go down, you can go swimming there. Nobody's going to tell you to get off the beach. But uh, with respect to the other issues, we don't have answers for that. To do that, you're going to have to go and... You're only taking responsibility for the 300. Correct. Yeah. Well, m more than that, it's the services are going to be the same as they've always been provided by the town. I mean, that's what we don't want people to think that they're not going to be lifeguards and they're not going to be clean. The services are the same that it's always been. Whether you own the property or don't own the property, I have no idea. You know, I'm not a, an attorney that's gone through all the deeds. I've, I've talked to people and people say, I have a right, you have a right. If you live in Humrock, I, I have no idea what it is. You know, that's really between the person that thinks they own it and the person that thinks they don't own it. We're, our concern is what are the services that the town is going to give to the beaches in Humrock, and they're going to be the same as they've been, as they've been historically. So on cleaning the beach all the way <clears throat> from one end to the other is still going to happen? Um, well, that's, I, I don't know what, what we've cleaned in the past. Um, have we cleaned beyond the 300 feet? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it may, may not. I don't know. I, I, We'd have to, I mean, it may, in fact, find that if, if we have maintained more than 300 feet, mm -hmm. that maybe there is. There is, and we could refer to town council here, if I may. Yeah. There is. If, we've, if we wanted to, and I'm not, you know, I really don't want to go down this road tonight because there's no need to. We're discussing the, the public beach. There are methods, legal methods, if we felt for some reason that mm -hmm. that uh, we wanted the public beach to be 500 feet instead of 300 feet, if the demand was such, we could, if we could prove, Jim, correct me, if we could prove that that extra 200 feet has been used for the past 20 or 30 or 40 years, we could, in fact, via the mechanism of adverse possession or peace Prescriptive possession. Prescriptive rights. Take that land. But I mean, again, that's a whole battle for another day, and we have no intention of going that route unless. You know. But yes, the to, to to point it out, it was brought up. We could do that, I suppose, if if if, if it was necessary. Right now, we we don't see it necessary. We see just what I said earlier: the 300 feet is all we're interested in. Nothing will change. So. So in conjunction with the two civic associations, the town has assisted in cleaning the beach by providing equipment for as long as I can remember. And you clean basically the whole beach, meaning from Fourth Cliff to Rexia. If Are we, you saying that's not going to happen? No, anymore? I didn't say that. You said I did not say that. What I said is, I think Tony said he wasn't sure exactly how much we cleaned. I will not. I am not sure how much okay. we cleaned. Well, I can tell you how much you cleaned. That's yeah. I mean, fine. If we may, if we did that in the past, uh, if we legally can do it now, we probably will. Right, unless all of a sudden you tell. Well, 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 if, if sudden, Mr. McDonough says we well, can't come into his property, then then we can't go on his property. We can't clean it. If your if your house abuts the beach beyond the 300 feet, and you say no, I don't want you crossing across the beach to clean my property, then we're not going to do it. 
Which so it, I like the idea of you cleaning. Then it. don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, Take I'm advantage of us doing it. When the truck comes on the beach and tries to go across McDonough's property, are we going to have a problem? You might take it up with Mr. McDonough. Maybe he'll not well, stop the truck. truck. But, well, if you don't want the beach, you know, I think really you're looking for something here that you're not going to get. No, I'm just curious. All right? I said we would do everything we possibly could to maintain the beach. If we clean the beach in the past, the entire beach, I would imagine legally permitting we'll clean it again. I can't make it much clearer than that. Yeah, okay. okay. Yes. Jeanette Langlois, uh, 20 Alden Street. I just thought it helped this gentleman out because the explanation, they're not actually, they're working in conjunction with HBIA and South Hamrock Civic Association cleaning the beach. They're volunteers that go down there and rake up the beach. Ah. The town has worked with these associations well, to bring asking. the bulldozer and the trucks down. Those certain I'm one days. of the rakers. All right, you're one of the rakers. The rakers <laughs> are volunteers. They're not paid by the town, they're volunteers. Yeah. Thank you. That, so the tr Thank trucks aren't on the beach, clean the beach. The wake is there. They bring it back to a spot, and the trucks come and pick it up. That will probably continue. Unless somebody says you can't go on my property, right? Well, that's what I'm asking. Well, you'd have to ask you the man sitting said, in front of you. You just said it wasn't going to change. Well, our intention is for our the services not, not to you're change. Really, you're, looking for, you're really looking for a reason. It's not going to change. If, if Mr. McDonough or someone else says you can't go on his property to rake up the stuff, then take it up with Mr. McDonough. Yeah, okay. That's all I can tell you. I really, it's that, it's that simple. Yeah, let's not, let's not bring more issues into it than what we're discussing here tonight. We're really talking that particular thing. There's issues you brought up that are interesting issues. I'm the representative of the Conservation Commission, and th these issues come up all the time. It's who's got the right of way at the end of the street? Who can walk on a public seawall versus a private seawall? Are we going to clean, you know, private beaches versus public beaches? That's all <coughs> stuff for different conversations in different days. Uh, we also clean other beaches. Um, and sometime in the future, completely unrelated to this, for all we know, maybe there's going to be some budgetary issues where we're going to have to pare back or expand cleaning of all beaches, including Humrock, something like that. That's unrelated to the issue at hand. Any changes that may or may not happen in the future are going to be completely decoupled from this particular issue in front of us right now, which is those, that 150 feet plus and minus. Marilyn. Oh. I'm, I'm not sure that I want to go to where I was going to go. Withdraw. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> Thank you. Again, any other questions pertaining, especially to the 300 feet, uh, whether there will be 300 feet, and, and what we'll do? Please raise them now. If you have any questions uh, that you think is pertinent to what we're talking about, raise them now. John. Just a final comment. <clears throat> it's, um, you know. We're charged with, with maintaining the public interest and maintaining public grounds. Um, it's a sad day when people are selfish and not willing to share in on things such as public beaches or beaches to allow people to utilize them. And I'd like to think next year we will not have this issue about this is my private property, get off it. But it may very well happen. And that's a sad thing when people are very selfish and not sharing. Um, a beautiful site that we have down in Humrock. That's my commentary. Thank you. Mr. McDonough. Uh, I'm Dave McDonough. My name's been brought up a couple of times. I thought the best approach would be to wait. I live at 31 Hobbit Street. I thought the best approach would be to wait to <coughs> a few people made some comments. Uh, I have a lot I'd like to say, but I'd like to start by thanking the selectmen for having this meeting and giving me an opportunity to speak and clear up things because there's been an awful lot of misinformation that's been spread out there. The first bit of misinformation was that uh, this crazy notion that the public beach issue is payback for the controversy of July 3rd. Nothing could be further from the truth. I don't know how that crazy rumor started. That's all it is, a crazy rumor. Nothing to do with July 3rd. Uh, a lot I was going to say has been, has been talked about, but one item that hasn't been brought up, and I find that pretty disappointing, is the folks that have raised questions or points uh, have not uh, spoken out about the vandalizing of private property, theft, and the destruction of private uh, property 
both public and private, and painting a SWAT sticker on a sign. To me, that's incredibly disappointing, and it makes you wonder, makes you wonder that people don't say, at least start by saying, I deplore this, but it is what it is. So, um, skipping to a few other comments, um, first that were made, am I going to deny uh, a front end loader from coming on my property to clean the beach? No, I'm not. Um, I also am a raker, a volunteer raker, and I plan to continue doing that. And by the way, we clean the private beach and the public beach. We don't ask what part of the beach it is. Uh, as far as access to the beach, that people who live on other streets, Central Ave or whatever, they have access to the beach. They do. Okay. Um, the, the real issue is that um, this vandalism and, and property stealing and all that kind of stuff, you know, I, I hope stops. Uh, the one point, and I'm, I've been the point man, by the way, with, uh, for 20 property owners with the town. And um, we really appreciate the fact that after many years that the issue has finally been addressed and that there are quote unquote boundaries to the public beach. And Pat and Chesney uh, did a very nice job in our viewpoint at least defining that. One thing that uh, we think was a mistake and that would have perhaps gone a long way towards reducing the controversy was one of our requests was the mailing list that you have for the folks that have purchased beach stickers to send them out a memo saying there is a change in the public beach, and carefully wording it, so the public beach extends 150 feet on either side of the beach. The decision was made not to do the mail out, but next spring when people get their new stickers to give them a handout explaining that, okay? I think in hindsight that was a mistake, so whatever. But. Um, we put up the property, we private property owners put up three signs. And as we've discussed, they were vandalized, stolen, spray painted, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, my house got egged. Not once, twice. Not a nice feeling. So, now why would any private property owner want to keep their property private? Just having to explain that to me is mind-boggling, but I'll try. And by the way, private property is the law. Not my law, not Hammerock law, not Situate law, but Massachusetts law. And unlike an, a lot of other states, Massachusetts does allow private ownership of the beach. And folks that come from California or whatever that I've talked to on the beach say, there's no private ownership in California. I say, I don't dispute that. You're not in California. Um, over the years, there have been many horror shows of irresponsible behavior, of people engaging in all sorts of uh, uh, things like drinking, swearing, playing loud music, leaving an absolute mess behind them, cutting through yards for a shorter walk to the parking lot, even urinating in people's yards. I'm sure that not anybody here on the board or in this room would tolerate this type of behavior of these people on their properties. And when you ask them to leave when they're doing that stuff, what do they say? They say, you don't own the beach, you can't make us. And until we've seen a sign from the town of Situate that says different, you can't kick us off. Now, if that's not enough, we also have the situation with the seawall. It's an accident waiting to happen. We've already had one lawsuit which resulted in expensive legal fees, and I've heard unofficially, not officially, that there may be another one in the works. As property owners, we're just looking to enjoy our property and also protect ourselves. Now let's assume for sake of discussion that I've made all this stuff up, or that I'm exaggerating things. So forget what I've told you so far. And I ask you, and I invite you, to go on to the blog, the Hummer Rock blog on the Patriot Ledger and read what's been said there, in writing, okay? People calling themselves, and this is their email names or their pen names, cuckoo, dog fanatic, serious or delirious, Captain Quaint, the summer girl. What are they, they talk about 
nice picture windows in the beachfront homes and all those rocks waiting to be thrown. And how all the security cameras in the world aren't going to make a difference. And how we, as patriots, should join together and tear up any signs that are posted. Also, a comment. We know when you go back to Florida, and we're going to be waiting. Next summer, let's congregate as a group in front of their houses and aggravate the blank out of them. Just let me just interrupt, if I may, Dave. Uh, I appreciate and I, I sympathize and empathize with what you go through because of the actions that were taken. I, I, no one would want that. No one would want that type of thing happening to their property or to themselves. Again, and I sympathize with you, but it's got very little to do with the public beach and with the issue we have here tonight. As far as the blogs are concerned, and I won't get into the blogs <laughs> too deeply, but if you pay any attention to the blogs, to people who anonymously write garbage in newspapers, and, and the signs. newspapers print it, uh, shame on you. Don't pay attention to that stuff. Joe, if I could, two points. The, One, they're yeah. not anonymous because they have to sign up on the But they're anonymous to the public. Their names and addresses. Well, they're anonymous to the, One. Pu to the two, public. The reason I'm bringing it up is John talked about selfish people not sharing. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to, if I could. Go ahead, continue. continue. I just wanted I, to. I think when I'm finished, I, I think. Maybe it'll come together when you're well, finished. My sense right. is that any reasonable person is going to say, are you kidding me? My God. <clears throat> it's okay. Uh, and again, a lot of emails <laughs> are even worse than that. Stuff I wouldn't say here in front of this group. But what's truly amazing is that with all this vandalism and threats going <coughs> on, the homeowners are the ones being called greedy, stupid, arrogant, and a whole lot more than that. So I guess I ask you, would you invite these <coughs> folks that do that kind of stuff and make those kind of comments on your property? I don't think so. Which brings us to where, are, where we are today. Are these property owners the selfish, grouchy pe people, people, excuse me, the papers that made them out to be? Or are they ordinary people who are fed up with all this nonsense? And more importantly, where do we go from here? Are these selfish, grouchy property owners willing to allow some nice families to use their beach on a warm summer's day? Or are they selfish people, like has been stated? Well, I can speak for them. And the answer is yes. Just as long as they act like normal, decent human beings, and they ask for permission to sunbathe or swim. Now, does that mean they're going to open up the properties to the general public? People that are going to make these uh, uh, comments and also act and misbehave? The answer is no. Uh, so, you know, where do you find these property owners to ask for their permission to use their beach? Well, you can find us on the beach, at the Sands End, uh, patronizing uh, uh, Maryland's store, um, at the Bridgeway, St. Christine's Church, St. Teresa's Chapel, or, believe it or not, volunteering at the Marshfield Senior Center, or volunteering at Sewing Seeds on Route 139, or, or volunteering at Reading to the Blind at WATD in Marshfield. So, what am I saying? These mean-spirited, grouchy, selfish property owners actually do nice things? How could they? They're nasty and grouchy. So I've been asked if the property owners are willing to compromise. As I think I've stated and you've heard, they certainly are. But they're not willing to be victimized and to put up with that kind of, of uh, activity. Another indication of our willingness to compromise is that we are willing to allow the public to walk on the beach between low and high tide. And if you research the law, or if you read yesterday's Patriot Ledger, you'll learn that the public does not have that right. However, the property owners aren't looking to bar people from walking their dogs or going for a stroll on the beach with their loved ones. No, on the contrary. They're in fact allowing it, even though they don't have to. So, I hope my remarks have cleared up many of the false rumors that have been spread. And again, I'm sorry that the town has taken all this heat on the subject. Uh, I do appreciate your time, so I'm setting the record straight. Uh, and the comment was made that you're not going to replace the town signs. From the, our group standpoint, we think that's a mistake and that's giving in to vandalism. That's just our opinion, okay? But uh, thank you very much for listening. 
And I'll sit here and answer any question here or outside the meeting. Uh, I've uh, been interviewed by the Patriot Ledger. I've been interviewed by WATD. I did ask that they not reveal my name. For whatever reason, it's gotten out, and as a result, a house has been egged twice. Not nice. Not I, nice. I, but I think we're reasonable people. I don't think we're the problem. Okay. I'm not sure if I've made that point here. Okay, I think you have made the point, and, and again, I'll repeat, we sympathize with you, and what happens with the blogs, what happens to the egging of the house, unfortunately, uh, when the blogs are concerned, we're out of our control. We're here to talk about the beach. Uh, I'm sorry what has happened to you because of, of the actions you've taken. I really am. Uh, but it really is, you know, again, we're maintaining the beach. And I don't, other than feeling sorry for you and hoping it doesn't happen again, uh, I know our police department's over there. If they, certainly if they see it happen, if they're aware of it, they're going to act on it. Right. Uh, Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Thank, thank you to the board. Yeah, just, just, a, ahead, yeah, just a quick comment. I mean, I think, I think you've shed some light to the people, and hopefully they're going to read about it and see it. It sounds like if people are reasonable, then you're going to let them still enjoy the beach that they've enjoyed for the last 25 years. Violence and all this name-calling and sort of stuff, there's no place for that. It's ridiculous. And like I think Rick nodded and Joe said, if the police catch you, they're going to they're gonna enforce it. So, And I hope they do catch the people that do that, because that's not the way you should treat anybody. Um, you know, in terms of if it's a hot day and there's a thousand people down on Hummerick Beach and someone's, you know, laying down there with three kids, I assume you're not going to run down there and, and whisk them away as long as they're asking reasonably. And that's what I think you said tonight. And as long as people don't take advantage of you, it doesn't sound like you're going to take, you know, a strict stance on it. And I think that's more than reasonable for us to request from you. So I appreciate you coming out and telling everyone. Well, let me just wrap it up with the board, sir, and then we'll wrap it up with you. Any other questions from the board? Sir. <coughs> Ricky, 25 Harvey Street. I'm Dave McDonough's neighbor. And uh, I sympathize with what he's going through because a lot of it I also get. There seems to be no boundaries in Hammerock. People seem, when they get there, they think they can go anywhere they want. They use my backyard for, for, for uh, urinating and whatever else they want to do. I have to pick up beer cans, bags, all kinds of stuff that they throw away. When before the gate went up at, at the end of Harvard Street, they would tear down the road, go to the beach, take their cooler, two guys, two muscular guys carrying a cooler down. Coming back, they're down the road again with their car kicking up all kinds of dust. One guy's carrying the cooler. Where'd all that stuff go that was in the cooler, okay? Then whatever rubbish they get, they drop it and leave it there. The homeowners have to clear it up. Now, not all people are bad. Not all the people get out there. A lot of them are very nice. Mm -hmm. But it's the bad ones that create the problem. And this would have never come to a head like it is if the bad ones, who seem to think there's no boundaries in, in, in Hamrock. The straightest, the, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and that's all they know. Thank you very much. I agree. I agree. There were, there were, there were, as, as usually happens, it's the bad apple or the bad ones that spoil it for everybody, and this is a perfect case. But, uh, we, we, we absolutely stress the point that the chief is here now, and he'll be ever diligent, as he always is, as far as, you know, if something like that happens, you know, and there's a way of reporting it to the police and getting the, for them to get there in time, which usually isn't the case, but by the time they get there, the, the culprits are gone, if I can put it that but way. it's not the good people. It's never the, the, the good people. a lot of good people. I get to know them. Yep. But unfortunately, it's the bad ones that miserably make your, 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 your life. I agree. And, you, and, and I could never go to Situate Harbor or any place else or in, into a residential area and walk through somebody's property. No, I agree. You can do it's, that. It's, it's, yep, that's it's, right. a, it's an issue, and it's a, it's a legitimate issue. It's, but, you know, regarding the beach, well, I'm not sure whether it's a public beach issue, but any other comments or questions? If not, I hope, as I said at the start of this conversation, that we clear the air. I hope there aren't <clears throat> too many questions uh, left. The beach is the beach. It will be the beach. Mr. McDonough, and I think he speaks for his neighbors, have said he's not against people. Someone goes down and says, can I sit at your beach with my children? Or can I walk them? No, no one's going to come down and make a big deal of it, I, is the way I understand it. Uh, I think the issue is solved. I hope it's solved. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you all.
Thank you all. I just saw Congressman Lindsay. In the oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. What's Sean? Are you selling raffle tickets? <laughs> uh, moving on, if we could, if we could close those doors, because there'll probably be a little. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, a meeting with uh, a new congressman, Stephen Lynch. As many of you know, with the redistricting that went on last year, Situate was put in the district with Congressman Lynch. So, Rick, when you're out there, can you get the Congressman? <laughs> We've invited Congressman uh, Lynch down this evening to first introduce himself uh, to the town, and secondly, to to inform the Congressman of any issues that we might have. Uh, congressman, welcome. Come right up front and sit down and sure. thank you. We spoke to Bob Fultz, your, your assistant earlier, and we appreciate him coming down and laying the groundwork for you coming here tonight. So. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I uh, want to thank the entire board for your kindness and uh, the courtesy that's been shown me here as well. Sir, could you close that door just because, go ahead. As you know, Joe, uh, the districts were redrawn in, in January. Uh, in Massachusetts, because of the census, we went from 10 members of Congress to nine. But for the remaining nine districts, they're, they're much, much larger. They went from about 600,000 uh, people per, di per congressional district to 727,514 uh, people right now on the new eighth, which includes the town of Situate. It includes 25 towns and three cities, the uh, city of Boston, the city of Brockton, and the city of Quincy. So the big challenge for uh, anyone such as myself trying to represent that new district is to <coughs> get to know everybody and, and, uh, and, and impress upon the, the people in all those towns and in those cities that uh, I care about them and uh, to try to get a sense of the special issues. Every town is different and Situate is, 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 a, a, is a very special place with a special set of issues that uh, are, are priorities. I've, uh, I've been uh, lectured to great lengths by, by uh, Jim Cantwell about the uh, seawall issue and so we're talking to the Army Corps of Engineers, looking at different programs. Uh, there's been a serious uh, reduction in funding for seawall construction over the last five years since we've we've had a difficult time since 2007 with the budget but you know I, I think that uh, if we put our heads together and we look at the available programs we should be able to make a, uh, a dent in it there is a program called the uh, it's called the water resources development act uh, and that funds uh, seawall construction and you have to go through the army corps of engineers but you have to get on a list so I think the first thing we need to do is to get Situate on that list. We spoke to the Army Corps of Engineers. They said we don't see them on our, our list yet, so we've got we've to correct that. But uh, uh, just by way of introduction, uh, I was an iron worker for 18 years, never thought I would be in politics at all. Uh, got involved in my neighborhood in South Boston. We were having terrible drug problems, crime problems down in the housing projects where I grew up. So I, I went in there and uh, began working just as a, as a citizen and, and as an attorney at the time, uh, helping those families, uh, asbestos on the pipes and lead paint on the windows. And after a long time of volunteering my time down there, uh, some of the neighbors said, you know, we, we've never seen our, our state representative. You might want to run for office. They said, at least then you'd be getting a paycheck. So. After, uh, after about 100 people suggested that, I, I ran for office. I served as a state representative in South Boston, later stu served as a state senator. And when my dear friend John Joseph Moakley passed away, 
uh, I was lucky enough to be elected to the United States Congress. I serve on a couple of committees down there. Uh, one is the Committee on Financial Services. It covers housing. It covers banks. Uh, we try to regulate Wall Street when we can. Uh, it covers insurance. It covers uh, credit unions. But I also serve on another committee, which is an investigatory committee, uh, the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. And uh, I'm on a, a foreign relations subcommittee within that committee. So I have uh, found myself uh, uh, 14 times in Iraq and the war zone there, and then uh, most recently about nine visits to Afghanistan, uh, mostly to make sure that the, the troops there, that we have our sons and daughters on the ground, have the equipment and, and the resources necessary for them to to succeed in their mission and come home as safely as possible. But uh, I have a, a large extended family, some in situate, uh, a lot uh, in the, the South Shore area. They all, the Lynch family moved south uh, from, from South Boston in search of parking uh, years ago. And uh, many of them found it and ne never returned. So I think we're the last branch of the family to, to remain in South Boston. The rest are all on the South Shore. They, I, they were the smart ones, I think. But uh, I just wanted to come down and uh, to introduce myself. And uh, I don't know if you're excited, but I'm very excited at the opportunity to represent the town of Situate in Washington, D.C. I'm more of a district-based representative rather than uh, uh, some, some members of Congress, they move to Washington and you never see them again. I have, my wife and I have two young girls. I'm here every single week. I come back to the district. Uh, I try to spend as much time as I can. I've been spending a lot of time in Situate lately. Uh, we're doing a lot of door-to-door -door in the district. I have a lot of childhood friends that uh, have moved here. And, uh, you know, they've been uh, great ambassadors to show me around and uh, make sure that I come to all the, the relevant events. We had an, an opportunity to uh, uh, work with Chris Heron. Uh, we attended the, uh, the, the drug information meeting at Situate High School. Very, very well attended. Uh, had to be 800 people there. A lot of parents. It was great to see. And uh, went to Heritage Days as well uh, recently. So. Uh, it's just been a, a very warm welcome that I've, I've received so far, and uh, I would be honored if I do get the opportunity to represent the town of Situate in the United States Congress. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And again, uh, our purpose tonight was to, to, to uh, let you introduce yourself and to welcome you and, and, and say we're looking forward to, to serving uh, with you and working with you for whether it be seawalls and, and we know the problems associated with that or any other issues. We know your reputation. We know what you've done to other cities and towns that you work with. So we're, 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 we also are very happy to have you here. Oh, and with you, that, Joe. let me just open that up if I may. Sure. If you don't like anything to say. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a, a nice conversation with uh, with Mr. Lynch at the um, Heritage Days. Um, you've got a very recognizable face and people come to you and you're, you take time to talk to everybody and, you know, I, I think, uh, um, you know, it's going to help situate, you know, get to the, the areas that we need to get to by having you represent us. So I'm, I'm thrilled about it and I think uh, it's good for the town in general. So thank you, Tony. Thank you. Rick? Yeah, thank you for coming as well. Um, now is not the time and place, obviously, for detailed discussion, but some other issues, obviously, of importance to situate um, and that you're familiar with in your district is commercial fishing. Mm. And uh, at some point, definitely like to be able to meet with your office and talk about um, various <clears throat> ways, the, the plight of the commercial fleet now, uh, how we can improve some things. The state and the feds have been very helpful to situate in terms of our harbor with dredging and, and other infrastructure, but we still have a long way to go. And um, you know, like I said, your ties with South Boston, obviously, where there's a large fleet as well, will be very um, translational down to this, the issues facing the South Shore. So Thank you, Rick. I, I absolutely agree. And um, I've already been uh, very active with the, yeah. the Boston commercial uh, uh, fishermen, so this would be an extension of that. But I certainly recognize the great legacy, the great history you've got down here uh, in Situate and, and also some of the other towns uh, on the South Shore that are also extremely uh, long invested in, in the commercial fishing industry. So happy to work on that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
Congressman, welcome. I look forward to uh, having you as our representative going forward. And I have to say, I feel like uh, Situate has more in common with your districts, uh, more so than we would with our former, which would be Cape Cod. And um, as you know, this is the Irish Riviera, so I feel like uh, between South Boston and Situate, you've got uh, you've got the best of both worlds. So, oh, th thank you, John. Thank you for your kind words. I was actually told by the people in Washington that uh, that track this that uh, I now have the most Irish uh, district of any congressman in the United States of America. And that's because of the, the town of Situate, I think, put us over the top. Yeah. <laughs> Again. I, 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 yeah, just <clears throat> lost my train of thought for a second as the room vibrated. But um, thank you very much for coming down. Look forward to working with you. And I, John said just what I was going to say. You know, growing up in South Boston, there's a lot of similarities with Situate. Um, I just really look forward to working with you. Thank you very much for taking the time coming down. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Congressman, thank you. And thank you to Bob folks for setting this up and the work you put into it. We appreciate it. It worked well. Congressman, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, really did vibrate. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Earthquake. Please. Well, let me tell. I'll just. Uh, There's a window. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> well, Check the West Conservatory. Uh, the uh, next item on the agenda is the Public Facilities Master Plan Steering Committee, Public Building Commission, Community Preservation Act Committee, Recreation Commission representatives. Uh, just as a way of, of, of explanation, if I may, before we get into these uh, uh, appointments, I'm uh, meeting the applicants. The purpose, my thought on the purpose of the Master Plan, Master Plan Steering Committee was the committee not to build the building. I mean, we have a Public Buildings Commission who, who does that very, very well. They, were, they would be in charge of the actual bricks and mortar that go into building that, that building. What the committee we're forming tonight, and I hope the board agrees with me, and if they don't, please feel free to jump in was to put together a group of stakeholders, people who have an interest in that building, whether it be recreation, senior citizens, whatever it might be, public citizens, residents, and who would, who would lobby, if I could use that word after the congressman, uh, if, I could, if, if, we could, if they could lobby for whatever their particular department wants. In the case of recreation, they might want to advocate for whatever. Uh, young children's room, you know, and that would be their job to, to when this building is built, if and when it's built, that they do, they do everything possible to get that young children's room into the plans. And I think that's what I see the, the, the role of this committee. Yeah, I think we talked about it before. Yeah. I mean, it's communication. Yeah. It's, it's just more arms to the public for communication both ways. So you are able to inform people of what's going on and you're able to give feedback to us in terms of what people are talking about. Um, again, as Joe mentioned, we don't need someone to build the building. You know, that's gonna be dictated by other, um, you know, other committees and other, other entities. But it's really the feedback and the communication and the lobbying and the keeping people aware of dates and times and initiatives that are going on on it is what, what my understanding of it was, so. I just wanted to yeah. bring that point out because we have some, some Misconceptions on it. I'm glad you did, Joe, because you know public building had some concerns. Ed DeSalvio had sent us a letter, and so I just thank you for bringing that up. Yep. And mentioning. Thank you. Uh, now, we'd like to. We have a list of uh, people who have sent in, sent in uh, letters of interest from the Council of Aging. Did I see? I guess. Let's see, Richard. I don't see him here, I don't think. Uh, recreation, I know. Uh, why don't you come up and just say hello, or I know everyone, both of you. I think most people know who you are, but the, this is the way we've been doing it. So if you would introduce <coughs> yourself and briefly say a word or two about yourself. My name's Mara Glancy. I live at 61 Kenneth Road. I also work part-time at the Recreation Department. Um, I do have an interest. I do not know how to build a building. I like the idea of what you just said. And um, I'm 100% behind this. I think it's it's wonderful idea. Uh, and I'd like to see this proceed positively. Yeah. 
My name is Bill Blake. I'm at, <coughs> I live at 16 Kingsway. I've been in town for about nine years or so. I've got two 10-year-old twins. I'm very excited to be um, hopefully going forward uh, on this board. And um, I, like Mora, do not have, know how to build a building either. But um, I'm very interested in moving forward with it. Thank you. We'll be making the actual appointments, I think, later on in the meeting. But thank you for coming in and saying hello. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, economic development, is there anyone here? For I don't see Victor's Victor here. not here no, either. Victor's not here. Planning board. Bill's not here. Bill's not, not here. Public building is not here. Jeff is not Disabilities. here Disabilities, Jeff is not here, but Jeff said that he'd be willing to serve, I think. Jeff Dugan. Good. Jeff Dugan. Uh, Paul Scott is here. Old standby. Paul, how are you? Very well. Not old standby in the <laughs> necessarily. Uh, before I begin, Sean, you may want to check your truck. Your parking lights were on, and I shut them off uh, about f five minutes ago. So I don't know if, you, if your battery went down. Did it break? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> bagged. Oh, oh. <laughs> bring my truck. Thank you, Paul. My <laughs> the van, the big van. You're, You're so <laughs> caught. You took the van? Okay. You're so caught. <laughs> uh, I'm Paul Scott, 359 Country Way, situate. Uh, the chairman talks about advocating and uh, with grandchildren who will be the sixth generation of uh, our family that uh, will be residing in situate. I want to advocate that uh, they have the facilities that they are going to need for their future needs. But I think it's important to uh, balance that with a program of our ability to pay uh, for whatever we, uh, whatever the group comes up with. Um, I'm very familiar with most, if not all, of the public buildings in situated as you probably are well known, and I'd be very uh, happy and interested to serve. We'd be happy to have you. Thank you. Yeah, obviously, Paul, you bring, <clears throat> you know, an inner knowledge that nobody else in the town has. You've yeah. worked here for 70 years and... 38, 38 years. sorry. Uh, and, and I've worked on most of those buildings in one fashion or another. And that's invaluable in these meetings when people I don't know. In terms of evaluating the existing buildings, I may have be able to help. I agree. Uh, I? Jennifer, Jennifer Morris, Jennifer's not here. See her here. Uh, Can I jump in? Yes, I'm sure. You, um, you have a, an applicant here for the public buildings. Commission. Michael Hager is in the back row. Michael, Michael, where are you? Oh, Michael's back there. Okay, I'm sorry, Michael. Why don't you come up and say hello? I'm sorry. Michael's been in town a few years. I, yep. I grew up with Michael. <laughs> Michael, how are you? Thank you Thank for coming. You. Just if you would, a word or two, just introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, I heard that there was an opening uh, on the commission. Yep. I've been in the building industry for over 30 years. Yep, great. Um, so I thought it, I'd like to try to give a hand in some things if possible. An exciting time to be on that, to, yeah. to be doing that. So. Right. Well, just as with Michael, I, I'm sorry, I was just talking to Tony, but with Michael's background, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a perfect fit. Yep. You know, it's what yep. he's done his whole adult life. Thanks Great. for thank stepping you. up. Just a quick, yeah, thank you, a quick question, Michael. Uh, is in the, you know, each, the way we set it up is a, a lot of the different um, vested groups got to appoint somebody. So, the public commission, we have uh, Jacqueline Carr next to that. So is, are you in the that position or is in the open? He's in the open seat for a public building. So you're in the, the open itself. other position. Okay, good. Yep. Just I just want to make sure we didn't overlook anybody because we thought they were somewhere else. We just put them on two things one night. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank Doug you. Doug Anderson. Thank you. Doug, Doug is here. There's Doug. How are you? Chair. Looking for that large position. How are you? Yes, sir. Good. I know you've been here. Good. Just again, if you would. Hey, uh, Doug Anderson, Sherry Way, um, West End. Um, I'm on the Pier 44 committee, and I think that right. is pretty much wrapped up. Um, I heard your um, statement earlier about the objectives. I can't necessarily advocate for one department's uses versus another. Um, I'm in the in the building code accessibility, life safety evaluation business, and we'd see my role as what I do every day, which is kind of a reality check or um, okay, this is a good idea, but this is what it's going to cost, yeah. this is what it's going to take um, in terms of any potential upgrades. And I know a lot of the buildings in town are um, older and are lacking in a lot of what modern requirements would be. And so can certainly help advise the different departments just as we did on Pier 44 as far as what would be required. 
Thank you. I think just an interested all, citizen, we, and I've been here almost 10 years at this point. We all want everything, and sometimes realistically, that can't be done. And I Absolutely. think people like yourself and Mr. Scott uh, are able to sometimes bring it, rein us back in. And I think what you're saying is mean? probably absolutely necessary. Gently. Centered in me. Okay. Thank you. I thought it was. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Craig. Craig Mutter. Craig, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good. If you would come up and say hello. Hi, Craig Mutter from 41 Pheasant Hill Drive. Um, uh, this is a new process for me. I've never, this is the first time getting involved uh, in my community. I'm, but I think this is a really uh, important issue. And listening to the comments about the, the mission of the, the committee, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, but my but I, I think my background is interesting for this process because uh, I've been an, uh, I am an architect. I've been practicing for 20 years, and I, I do build buildings. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, in in that process, I'm used to uh, reading master plans, and I understand what the role of a master plan is, and and what makes a good master plan. And um, <clears throat> so so I think I could bring that that uh, that skill and experience. To, the, to this process, and uh, most importantly, I have two very young kids, a three and six, that are coming up through the public schools, and this is a really Im important issue for me. I think um, that their environment is is critical. Um, also, I, I might add that most of, most of my experience is working with historic structures and, and reusing buildings. So I think you know the fact that we're trying to reuse what we have is is really important, and there's a lot of ways to do that. Greg, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Uh, just to take a break for a second, Brian, we just went out. There was a little rumble here. Maybe you could bring us up to date on I, I got it. <coughs> Apparently it was a four and a half uh, scale earthquake that was centered in southwestern Maine. Oh. We, we've gotten a ton of calls on it, though. Yeah. So. yeah. It was a magnitude. I've just been checking various websites I know about. So this is a, it was a 4.6. And it was uh, 12 miles from Gorham, Maine, 92 miles from Boston. Thank you. That's Thank you. Uh, so if you did hear a rumble, if you felt a rumble, it was an earthquake. Yeah. Just now? It Maine. happened right when Steve Lynch was here, right when he was wrapping up. <laughs> All right, moving on before, uh, let me just make sure we. She just got here. Uh, Jacqueline Carr. Hi, how are you, Jack? Can you come up, please, and just say hello and from the Public Buildings Commission. We know know you from your last visit here, but yeah. again, bring everyone up to date, just who you are and what board you're on. Uh, so my name is Jacqueline Carr, and um, I live on Tilden Road, and I'm on the currently on the Public Building Commission from the last meeting, and um, I'm looking to join the steering committee for the master plan for the mm -hmm. town. Basically, we thank you very much for coming. We said earlier that this committee is not uh, not to be involved, I guess, in the bricks and mortar, is not to be involved in the building of the building by any means at all. What it is, it's a, it's a, a committee made up of stakeholders, people who could advocate for different areas of expertise or different areas of interest that they might have. You know, so, so the Public uh, Buildings Commission will be still 100% uh, uh, in involved in charge of the actual physical structure building of, sure. of that building. This is just a group that will advocate for, for, for things they think are important. <coughs> and when that all comes together, you'll yeah. be... Yeah, and I think the last time I was here, I was mentioning to you that my, my, my real interest was with the master plan and being yeah. involved in out to town. So, yeah. thank you for coming in. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll make the appointments, as I said, later on this evening. But, uh, but you're, you know, as Joe was saying, there's a there's appointments that come from just the various stakeholders that are involved, like recreation and public buildings and disability, and then there's the the open ones that will appoint from just the general public. And Karen Karen Pichard, Karen is here, is not here. Okay. We'll be making these appointments later on, and uh, if we, there may be an opening or two left. I'm not sure after we finish tonight, but if there is, we'll deal with it. All right. Moving along. Excuse me, I did just want to make a note that 
that um, Rob McCary and David Smith were not able to be here tonight. They are commissioners on the recreation commission. And they are interested in being co liaison members on the Preservation Act Committee. Okay. And those applicants that came and, and, and made a presentation, yes. feel free to leave. Do not wait around till the appointments. Richard Mitchell's here. Richard Mitchell is in the back. There's Richard. How are you? Come up, Richard, from the Council of Aging. <coughs> How are you? Pretty good. Good, thank you. If you just briefly tell, tell the board. Richard Mitchell, uh, been in town for a few years, live on uh, Gannett Road. I'm on the Council of Aging. And uh, looking forward to the process. Uh, my background with a few different organizations is uh, we've had anywhere from 25 to 55 buildings, done a lot of space planning, and uh, looking forward to the process. And we're looking forward to having you on the committee. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think that's all the applicants. Again, feel free to leave. Don't think you have to stick around. Uh, Next, a discussion to vote a new drain layers license, Leo Costello. Let's just, uh, I don't see Leo here. Is it in the packet? Here it is here. Uh, I think many of us know Leo, being a resident and a businessman in town for a long time, so. A motion? Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a dr drain layers license to Leo Costello at uh, Laminar Construction, 29 Long Meadow Road in Situate. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Jen, how are you? We just made the. Come on up and say hello. <laughs> I have a few minutes late. You are a few minutes late, but we will not. Uh, uh, that won't change anything. If you, just to interrupt, uh, Jen was a minute or two late. We did do some interviews. Why don't you just bring us up to date, those of you who, who might not know Jen. We're very familiar with her, so oh, was go ahead. Hi. Will you push that microphone? I, I received comments from people that people at the desk cannot be heard sometimes. So if you'd pull that microphone a little closer to you. Okay. Perfect. How's that? Hi everyone, I'm Jen Morrison, and um, do you need me to state address, anything in particular? <laughs> no, nope, you had your name, Sorry, address, just your, 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 you want to serve on the board. Your interest in the project, other committees you served on, that sort of yes. stuff. Yes, I'm um, involved with Friends of Situate's Future, a grassroots community group interested in um, mm -hmm. passing uh, one of the articles on the vote on November 13th and um, also involved with the Economic Development Commission. And um, I applied to be a part of the steering committee for the Town Buildings Commission, or committee. committee. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna be making the appointments later. If anyone has any comments, thank you. Okay. We'll be making the appointments later on. No need to stay around as I okay. keep repeating. Thanks, okay. And Victor's here as Victor's well. Victor's here also. Victor, if you'd come up. Yeah. Just introduce yourself and say hello. And sure. I'm Victor Milligan with the Economic Development yep. Commission. Hello. Are you serving the committee? So I serve in the committee. I was asked uh, by Chris, our chairman, to participate in the steering committee and happy to do so. And happy to see if we can find some economic opportunities as this plan rolls out. Again, thank you. And that's exactly what we're looking for. You might have some input that, that no one else thinks of, something that might be economically beneficial to the town. And, if that's the case, we more than welcome you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Joe. <coughs> how you doing? Victor, how are you? Rich Hebert and Bill Johnson are both here. Well, Is Bill here? Bill's not here, I don't think, but Rich Hebert's here. We know Rich, so I think for the school committee, there's probably no need to reintroduce yourself. Thank you for offering to serve. And on the, on the, on the, a big part of my life. Our right. pleasure. Uh, Esther. How are you? I'm well, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, Esther Blacker, and I'm here for a one day uh, malt and uh, wine and malt beverage license for the 16th annual Joshua's Run, which is this Saturday um, for the Jimmy Fund. And 
Uh, we just have a nice little post-race party at St. Mary's Parish Center. So we're hoping to, you know, have the adult beverages there for anybody that wants it. <laughs> Motion. So when is that again? It's this Saturday. This Saturday. Yeah. And what time does it start? So uh, the kids' fun run is at 8.30, okay. the two miles at 9, and the five-mile cliff challenge is at 10. At 10. And where do people meet for that? At St. Mary's Parish Center. At St. Mary's Parish. Yeah. And it's this Saturday. Yeah. It's this Saturday. Saturday. That's right. Yeah, thank you. And this has been going <laughs> for how many years? 16. This, this is 16. Year. Yes. Wow. Yep. We've raised 413,000 for the Jimmy Fund. Wow. Since then, yeah. Wow. So, it's good. It's a fun thank you. it's a fun race. Great community event. Thank you. Wow. 8:30 this Saturday. Yeah. You going to run? You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, mo motion. Mo move the board of select and vote to grant a one day wine and malt beverages license to Joshua's run for a fundraising event to be held at St. Mary's Parish Center, 1 Kent Street, Saturday, October 20, 2012, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good, Good luck. Thank Congratulations, you. yeah. Next is the. Uh, Discussion vote on the November 13, 2012 special town meeting warrant. Uh, what I'm going to do. Uh, Walk-ins. Walk walk is anyone here for walk-ins? I forgot walk-ins. And then. As I do that. Number nine is the weight. I think yeah. he skips one. Did I skip one? What else? Water rates. Uh, would someone get Al? There it is. Al, how are you? Good morning. Hi. Evening. <laughs> have we been cold? Yeah. We were watching next door and uh, missed our cue. Our okay. It's all right. right. This is a continuation of the discussion we had last week on the the possibility of raising the the water rates in order to pay for the infrastructure that has to be done to clear up the brown water. We've had a good part of this discussion last week. Al has a few things he'd like to add, uh, and we welcome now to do that. Al, go ahead. Thank you very much, Joe. I thought what I'd do is just kind of review a couple of the highlights we did last week and then get down into the discussion where you can begin to look at some uh, alternatives, which one thing we didn't provide you last week was alternatives. Um, we're here to talk about the water um, infrastructure improvements that we need to make to resolve what is the problem. The problem is the brown water that's generated in our pipes. We don't make it when we make water. We don't get it out of the ground that way. It comes from within our pipes because of the 111 year old cause, which is the condition of our cast iron pipes in situate. We have, um, at this point, 24 miles of those cast iron pipes, six inches in size, they were installed between 1901 and 1934. The solution is, ultimately, this town is going to have to replace those pipes at a total cost of around $27 million. Um, $24 million is to replace the pipes themselves. The other 3.6 is we want to install a green sand filtration system on well number 17 to remove at the source manganese, uh, which then enables us to uh, put that water directly into the system as opposed to reprocessing it through the uh, old oak and bucket pond and 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 uh, generally creating a, an off flavor. The funding, as you know, since it's an enterprise, and I'm saying this for the benefit of our listening, vast listening public, um, uh, because we are an enterprise in the water division, as a, it's a financial entity, that it must self-fund its own improvements. The money cannot be taken from uh, uh, the general ledger, uh, or, and there are no state or federal grants available uh, for this water main replacement work, um, and therefore any capital improvements we make have to be funded by the fees that come in to run the water department. And then uh, what we're advocating for is that a water rate adjustment will be used to fund a bond to pay for the work that we want to continue from the past and, and uh, move forward with the next step. Now, that means we're talking about water rate increases. And what is the impact of a water rate increase on our 
public. And, and virtually 100% uh, of situate residents are water rate payers because we have <coughs> almost yeah, no private you. wells Thank in you. the town. We're 100% by and large uh, supplying water for businesses uh, and uh, residents in town. So we proposed an increase last month, last week rather, of 35%. Uh, and the question came up, well, what does this cost the average family? Well, now I have on this chart here the rate impact, the impact of a rate increase on a typical situate household. If you look at this chart, a family of two and a family of four. Well, how is this arrived at? A family of four uses 65 gallons a person per day. Well, how do we know that? We take all the water we produce, we divide it by the number of people in situate, and that's 65, 64 gallons a day, and we have to report that to the state. So these are real numbers. This is not something made up hypothetically a typical John Doe family. This is our average family. A family of four uses more water than a family of two, twice as much. If we increase the rates by 35%, that would mean for the family of four, they would pay $135 more per year. This is about the equivalent of a dunk, large Dunkin' Donuts coffee a week. <laughs> or 13 packs of cigarettes a year. That's the impact of a 35% rate increase. On our smallest families, families of two, such as myself, my wife, myself, the increase is less because we use less water. Families that are larger, of course, would pay more. Um, uh, people who are heavy users of water uh, would pay more because of the way the rate structure works. But this is what the impact is on our rate payers, of which all of us in this room are. So I'm not proposing something that we don't all have to uh, bear the cost of. The, what, what, well, what, what would we do if we, what would this improvement would be? How much improvement would we make? Well, if we increase the rates by 35%, uh, we'd be able to fix that well I've been telling you about, replace 8.6, replace clean line 8.6 miles of pipes, which solves, which eliminates 35% of the bad pipes in town. I told you there are 24 miles of bad pipes, getting rid of eight of them means we'll solve 35% of that problem. So we're not done. We'll be back at the trough at some time in the future. But we can't handle more work than this over the next couple of years. Uh, obviously, uh, if, we have, if we have less money coming in through a, a lower rate increase, then we could do less, fewer miles of pipe. Um, and if we could look at something like a 10% 10, 10 we can, we, all we can, what we can do is fix the filtration at well number 17. So, that's really kind of providing you with the data that I think you might want. And we're here, Jim DeBarros and Kevin Cafferty and John Clarkson uh, from the Water Resources Committee to answer any questions and help in any way we can. And one question <coughs> to start us off. A 10% increase would just fix the well. Yes. And that would not necessarily help the brown water at all. Would it? That would help the uh, musty flavor that's in our water, and it would help in a secondary way, brown water a bit, because it would, it, by fixing this well, it changes how the pumping systems work, and we'd have fewer incidences of uh, where it's high pressure breaks pipes. Now, that's not a, not, you wouldn't see a, a huge leap in improvements. <coughs> but, okay. That's good. <coughs> All right. To the board, Tony. Can I just piggyback on that? The the filter, typically that would be in the capital plan. No, it wouldn't be coming through a, a rate increase. It All of these will have to go in the capital plan. But wouldn't that just go through the normal process of the capital plan and be on your list of 20 other things that needed to be fixed? Yes. And it would go through that process? Yes. So why, why would we discuss it as part of... Well, because we have to fund it. The only way to fund it, the only way to fund that capital plan is through a rate increase. Right. I think... So what we need to do, we can't put something, we don't want to put something in the capital plan unless we have a method of paying for it. At this point, we wouldn't be able to seek approval in this year's fall planning process for capital planning unless we knew how we're going to fund it. And there's no other sources of funds. There's no, and we have to do borrowing and the borrowing is paid for by rates. And you, you have this filtration system as ahead of repairing any pipes in all your scenarios. Is that, what's the reason for that? Because of less this dependent on surface water. 
So by putting that, you will be able to use. Yeah. Right. Ground, right now, currently that well fluctuations in the system. That well is up uh, off of Tack Factory Pond Road. That water is pumped all the way down and dumped into Old Oak and Bucket Pond. And then, then it's taken back there. out of Old Oak and Bucket Pond I and see. filtered. So it would be filtered right at the source yes. and go right into And the, the other thing it's doing is that yeah. it's depositing in Old Oak and Bucket Pond manganese. So we're building up sludge in that pond that's manganese. So when we have this inversion, it stirs that stuff up. And then it comes in and we have to take it of it. So, yeah. I mean, we have choices. I mean, the capital planning will have choices about how how we proceed. Right. This is not the final decision on anything. But we know exactly which pipes we want to replace and in what order we want to replace them. The first area we're going to go with pipes is down at Lighthouse Point and Rebecca Road <coughs> and First Avenue and that whole loop through there because those are very old pipes. When they break, they're the furthest from the source and they stir up everything back upstream. <coughs> so we're going for the most important pipes first. Um, then out in Glades Road is another area. We've got a crappy pipe out there that breaks. And when it breaks, it stirs up everything in the system. You know, so if we went back to the sources to make repairs in pipes, it affects what's back there, but the breaks are down here and stirring up everything in between. So if we didn't do the filtration, then we'd have another three and a half million dollars, which is roughly another three and a half million miles of pipe. So no well plus 8.6 means 8.6 and 3.5, everybody knows is 13, 12, 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, well, there's probably other yeah. capital items that you're yeah, looking yeah. for in the capital plan, too. So I thought that that filtration system would probably be um, considered under that. But so with the get, pipes. Yeah, I get yeah. that. Hmm. All right, let someone else talk. Rick Murray. Yeah, Al, um, regarding the $135 for a family of four or whatever it was, you drew an analogy to Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I think probably a better comparison is that I bet the people that get chronic brown water are spending far more than $135 a year on, yep. on uh, cleaning their dishwasher out, cleaning the laundry out, and all this sort of stuff. And yes. I, in my, just speaking personally, uh, of where I live, I don't get it much, but we do get it enough. And uh, I bet we spend a little more than that just getting it fixed. So yeah. And tapping out the water, it. tapping out the bad water, trying to run it clean. Yeah. 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 John, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, I think I asked this question before, and forgive me, but how many miles can you actually do a year of pipes? Two. 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 And the reason why I'm asking is because it just seems if we're asking, I mean, if, if you do two miles a year, so that really would be about, um, That's a good question. just thinking, um, okay, how many? Five what's the cost? A 5% increase would be 1.7 miles. 1.7 miles? Okay. It all depends where we're working, too. Because can you uh, just, again, would you move that microphone? Can you use the mic? You, yeah. Because people cannot. It, it all depends where we're working also, too. If we're working down on Glades Road, it's it's kind of wide open. Last last year, we had Tilden and we had Stockbridge open at the same time. It seemed like the whole town was shut down. And then we also had opened up Hollett Street, too. Those were some of the main streets in town. But if if we're going around the lighthouse, that's that's one area that's kind of isolated. If we're doing Glades, it's another area that's isolated. We can pick and choose. Um, we're also going to have to work on First Parish, too, which is going to tie stuff up. But we can pick to get more mileage out of it, areas that are on the outskirts, per se, too. The reason why I'm asking, and I think you answered this, Jim, but um, your high priority is, is the filter for uh, the well, number 17, right? Okay. So no matter what, that is the high priority then. I ask that because I'm kind of, I know that you're asking for more over the next course of three years, and what I'm inclined to say is, let's do the, if, if, if the board's so inclined, I'd, I'd say get the well, because that's going to be a, a, hopefully a, a, a cost savings in the long run. And if you're capable of doing two miles per year, then let's start with that. I know you don't want to hear this, but then come back again. So that if you max out your mileage each year, then we come back and approach it. Instead of saying, let's do the full 35%. I'm not, I'm, next year you come back again, I'd probably say increase it, keep doing it as we go, instead of doing the full amount. 
Um, the reason is, is um, I've heard both sides. People say, do it, get the brown water cleared up. But clearly, by spending this amount of money right now, we're not going to clear it up for presumably six years, seven years. Um, but I think instead of increasing it to 35 percent, I'm inclined to say increase it to, if it's 15 percent, we'll do 15 to get the filter, get two miles or three miles going, and then see how it goes next year. A 35 percent increase, I know that you're doing it based on, you know, $135, but that's on top of what people are paying presently, which when you begin to factor that in, that's a lot of money for the water. Um, but I think that's my position. I'm inclined to say let's increase it. If it's 15 percent, I'll do that um, so you can get started with three miles, get the filter, then we'll approach it again next year and the year after and year after instead of trying to do the full amount at this point. That, that's my thought. So that, that, that is a good strategy. Maybe I could edge you up a little bit um, on that because uh, it takes – there's a lead time, a lag time. Yep. Okay. And so to start a project, get it done, and then wait for the next – do the next increase and then start it, there's, it's kind of like a herky-jerky motion. Yep. We can uh, do a better job on contracting. If there's a prospectus that we're, you know, we're starting one job that's underway, construction's going on while we're doing engineering on the next job, and then there's a leapfrog. So we kind of prime the pump a little bit, maybe at that 20% level. Uh, then that gives us enough to get a couple of years worth of pipe work going, you see, yep. and uh, and funded. And then, um, I mean, that's the, then that's the $77 a year kind of impact on people. Okay. So that, that, that'd that be, uh, I understand where you're coming from, and, and I... I see that. Can I ask a question of clarification? Again, put that microphone if you would, John. With close. Just with the strategy you're laying out, it, this strategy is based upon a X million dollar bond for a long term capital project. Correct. Are the strategy you're laying out, put it in the operating account and chip away two miles per year out of the operating account and not go through the bonding process? I'm, I'm no, a little I'd unclear say, on I'd something here. I'd say bond it, bond it, and let's get started for the first phase of the next three miles plus the filter. Then, like we've done in the past five years, kept coming back to the board saying we're going to increase it again to try to do it. Um, I just don't, I don't think that we should do the full 35 percent. First of all, because we're only going to get eight miles, and presumably, based on our analysis, we're still going to have brown water. Hopefully not as much, and it will be improved. But um, I just think, given the economic times, given the fact that the board is, is looking at other plans mm -hmm. altogether, that, you know, instead of asking people to pay 35 percent, when we can only do two miles or three miles per year with a filter, let's do that. That's the reason, John. Well, well, can I ask, can I follow up with, how, how much does a 5 percent increase give you in money? Is that just enough to pay a year's payment on a bond, or is 5 that? 5 percent increase in money gives us around, uh, well, 10 percent increase gives us around in, in, in revenue, a 10 percent increase is around two hundred thousand dollars a year, so about one hundred thousand dollars a year for five percent. Okay, and that's so you're just paying a 10 year bond payment 20, yeah. or 20 year. How much was it per? And I worked this with the treasurer, she mm -hmm. helped calculate out the, or recognize the fact. Oh, we're going to check your numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are. that's why I check my numbers. <laughs> 27 million. So it's a million bucks a mile? Is that? Yeah. It's about. Yeah. And the, uh, it'll be a mortgage type bond, okay, so where you're paying a steady stream of money as opposed to print 120th the principal plus all that interest. Once, right. So, okay. Sean? It didn't dawn on me when I was talking to you earlier about this project that, um, you know, the one two miles per year. Kevin, have you ever done it in other towns where you've had, why couldn't you go out and do two areas at the same time? Well, that, that's I, what I was saying we could do when I when I brought that up. We could do two different sections of town. Two different contracts. Two different know, contracts, yeah, completely, right, yes. Have, you like Just like we did Hollett is a completely different contract right. as Stockbridge and, and Tilden Road. All right, maybe I missed it, but John raised it, you know, made me think of it when I agree with John and not go out too far you know, who knows what will happen in three or five years on a, right. on a bigger project right. if they can only – is that companies can only do that two miles a year or – No. Is that, no, it's just disruption to the town. But All right. I pulled that out of the air. You know, okay. Kevin's probably better uh, focused on how much construction can go out at one time. Can't block too many streets. All right, so all right. We so could get eight range. miles in a in a year. We could work that out. Right, but it, you couldn't get around. Okay, couldn't get around. Right, yeah. Right. Okay. That was my only thought. Rick. 
Yeah, John's points are, are very valid and uh, are good points. Um, I truly mean that I, I disagree with that, with his approach, um, but I see where he's coming from and it makes a lot of sense. My, my take on this is, yeah, if we do the 8.6 miles over whatever number of years, it's still not gonna solve the problem. But if we only do two or four miles in the next couple of years, it's still not gonna solve the problem even less. So I I'm more inclined to uh, bite the bullet and try to get this done as soon as we can. Um, there's probably gonna be some efficiencies in, in biting off a bigger number in the financially as well as in terms of mobilization and stuff like that. But I'm not sure there's um, enthusiasm for that. So um, I still, you know, I brought up last week or two weeks ago whenever we last talked about this, perhaps having the 35% on only that fraction that's the highest user to try to help the highest gradation on there, to try to help uh, encourage conservation because that also is an easy way of reducing wear and tear on the system and all that sort of stuff. So if we were to go for a you know, 20% or whatever the number you were talking, or 15% or 20% or 17, something down in that range, maybe we could consider putting a 35% just on that highest, what is it, over 3,000? Here's the, uh, over 3, the question I asked this question. Yeah. Um, so the, rate, the way the rates work, this is for a, gal a family of four again, 90,000 gallons of water a year. The service charge, they pay $143 in a service charge in a year, paid quarterly. Uh, the first 36,000 gallons, they pay, you can see, it's kind of even hard to say how much money this is, but it's it's uh, less than a tenth of a penny per gallon. And so that the first usage is around $32. Then the next group of usage, uh, is about four tenths of a penny per gallon, and that that's where that's where that works out for a family of four. A family of two is using much less of this, okay. and then uh, beyond that, uh, the charge is uh, 0 0.7 cents, uh, you know, mm -hmm. seven tenths of a penny per gallon, and so that's you know that's that's the rate structures. This this and this. Yeah, so I'd be arguing for increasing that bottom one a bit more. By 35 percent, as opposed to 20 percent, or 17 yeah. whatever you suggest. You know, the only question with that is, you don't get, you know, if you if you're promoting people to conserve water, and you don't want them to spend it, then you're not going to generate the revenue to fix your pipes. I appreciate that, but there's two sides of this coin. I mean, if we were only interested in raising revenue, I mean, our overall goal here is to deliver is to conserve water, to deliver good water, and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. we have to be cognizant of the financial impact of these plans, not only on the users, but also on the town in the context of revenue, because that's what we use to fix problems. But yeah, I just, that, well, that would address, my long idea term, would address I agree, long term. Long -term. And, but, but also reduce the operating costs, because the less water we use, the less wear and tear there is on, the, on the, you know, all the plant and all that sort of stuff, and that's, that's significant. Um, I guess my thought is, you know, we, we've done a very good job over the last five or six years, as John mentioned. We've increased the rates 5% consistently. And um, as your slide shows, this is a 100-year-old problem. You know, for us to think we're going to solve it in five years and re-pipe re every single thing in the town, I think is probably an unrealistic goal. And I think we've made huge strides. I mean, in five years, we've replaced almost a third of the pipes, I think you said. You know, I think if, if we were to say, you know, five years ago that in 15 years we're going to replace every pipe in town, I think that would have been a pretty <coughs> aggressive plan. And not that it doesn't need to be done, and if we could do it all at once it would be great. <coughs> My fear is, A, the Economic Times and people's purses and all the other initiatives are going to people and asking them for money for. So I've got to lean more towards John and even probably lower than John. I mean, I th if we've been increasing at 5% a year, I can see doubling the effort. The thing that's in the in the mix now is the filter. You know, that's a whole new whole new game that we're looking at here. And that's where I almost think that should be taken out of the mix and put in the capital plan project and looked at with with just the regular capital plan process. And I think if we were to take 10% and put it just towards doubling the the initiative that we put towards replacing pipes for the last 5 years, that that is what I think is is a reasonable and a more assertive goal and I think it's it's keeping us on track and you know to think that we have to fix the whole thing in, in three years is I think is unrealistic. 
But doesn't the capital plan aspect still get funded from this rate increase anyways? So by saying by by saying that you you'd want to put the filter as part of the regular capital plan, that regular capital plan has to get funded by by increases in the enterprise fund, which comes from rate increases. So it's the same thing. Right, but but there's like I said, there's ten other things that they want for capital plans but in the capital plan listing. Well, so didn't he just say that this would be number one in your capital plan? If you have the money for this, this is number one in your capital plan. Right. So and he can't go to the capital plan without the money there. Right, but there is money from stuff dropping off the plan from prior years. There's, you know, the whole budget process that we go through the capital plan. I'm looking at this initiative as strictly improvements to the pipe infrastructure of the pipes, and that's what I think that this rate increase would be. Um, you know, because you still have your five percent increase from the year before, and like I said, you have capital projects that are dropping off. They're going to leave money there for to be spent on new stuff. Um, that's think, my take on it. I think that. Uh, and I hear you both sides of this argument very well. I think putting the, the filtration issue on the rate increase guarantees that it'll be done, it won't be voted down. There is a, always that, that slim, very slim chance, but there is always that chance that if it went on the capital plan, it could be voted down. And I think this is a, a somewhat of a more of a guarantee that it'll get done. But I, I, I feel it would go on the capital plan. It's a good enough issue. It's a good enough item that uh, the town would also see that it had to be voted. So, uh, but if you take this out of the, this part of it and does get voted in and whatever is part of the capital plan, <coughs> it's going to erode any money you have available for the for the pipe part of what you're what you are supporting. Right, so I just I don't see I see it just well, as a little shell game well, as to whether well, you. No, say I, th here I think or what's or happening here is we've taken another initiative and in putting it into the problem of brown water. You know, all of a sudden we're saying it's more important to get the magnesium out of the. This uh, is, but that is the component of the brown. That is, you know, it's mm -hmm. the well, the problem chicken. is the pipes are 100 years old and they're all with sludge. But that's the stuff that's in them. It's the, it's the magnesium. Well, I get it, but that we didn't deal with that five years ago. You know, for the last five years, we've said, let's fix the pipes, let's fix the pipes, let's fix the pipes. So now we're saying, okay, well, we want to filter, too. Right. And I'm yes. saying... Can I suggest something? The, uh, tonight... <laughs> that microphone, I hate to keep reminding yeah. people to move tonight, over. really, the, the capital planning process, I think, will flush that out, because we still have to go before Good the point. capital planning committee, the um, advisory committee, yourselves, several times, to flush out how do we spend, what do we put in the capital plan, okay? And that would be, you know, so is it filtration or is it pipes? Filtration pipes, filtration pipes. That's a decision that you can make, okay? You're not making it today because we're not here to, we, we can't make it today. What you can't, what you really, uh, the impact that we're deciding upon now is the quantity of money to go into the ability to do some capital planning. And right now, there is no money available to do ca that kind of capital planning. So I think uh, here is really kind of where your, where the decision is of tonight is is what uh, investment do you want to make in terms of rate increase that will then help you go make the decisions of capital planning. Okay. All right. Um, further discussion from the board, uh, from the floor. I would just like to add that. Um, you have before you a map. What I did is I took, uh, they've been keeping a log sheet of all the calls that have come in and complaints on the brown water. And I have mapped uh, the location of all the complaints since I agreed to be chairman of the Water Resources Commission. It's not an isolated problem in the town. It is throughout the town. And uh, the Water Resources Commi Committee met and mm -hmm. we fully support the uh, full 35% increase. I am very sympathetic and understand the concerns about a rate increase at any time, this economic climate or any economic climate. But year to year, work gets deferred and gets postponed. And now we have a 110-year problem, and now, we're, and now what you're suggesting is that we have a 115-year problem. I understand you have a lot of proposals before the town people about some very valid projects a new middle school, a refurbished town hall, everything else. These are all very visible items that we can all see. No one sees what's underneath the ground. And unless you have a viable infrastructure, water, transportation, electricity, wastewater, those buildings, those nice buildings are, are secondary 
to the infrastructure you need to support them. So I really ask you to consider the, uh, on behalf of the Water Resources Committee, uh, putting as much effort as possible into our ability to keep clean, healthy water available and significantly the water pressure needed to help our first responders in the event of an emergency. Thank you, John. Anne. Anne Burbine, Pennycrest Road. I couldn't agree more with Mr. Clarkson. We all have choices that we have to make. And as I said two weeks ago, water is a finite resource. And it is a resource that we need to protect. We need to guard it closely. Clean water really for us is right. And how do we ensure that we have that clean water? We have to give to get. And I know that you don't like to hear that we have the lowest water rates around, but believe me, we do. Thank goodness we don't have Aquarian. Thank goodness we're not in the MWRA. When somebody's paying five or $600 a year for water in the MWRA, that's a quarter. We have to give to get. And what we're doing here is making up for 20 to 30 years of neglect. And as Mr. Clarkson has just pointed out, these pipes are 110 years old. Five years from now, they'll be 115. How many more water breaks will we have? How many more complaints will we have in terms of brown water? I don't have brown water. I'm willing to pay. Let's not pit one group against another in terms of who has dirty water and who doesn't. We're a community. We need to act as a community and we need to pay for it and make the necessary choices that we have the viable infrastructure that can enable the buildings that we want, the public safety that we need going forward. I fully support the 35%. Let's bite the bullet, people, and let's go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Back to the board for this further discussion or well, first let's or, get or it on the table. Go ahead. There's no public safety issue. <laughs> okay. The fire chief isn't coming to us saying we don't have water pressure, we can't put out fires. Never never in the five, six years I've been here has anyone come up and said, if you don't fix these pipes, we can't put out fires. So let's not go down that path. Um, granted it could probably be better, but that's not the concern here. You know, I think that uh, it's definitely a need. It's definitely something that we all see. We, it is visible now. Al's been showing us these pipes for three years. I think everybody knows what it looks like. Um, I just think, um, you know, this is, this is a tax increase. It's something that doesn't have to go before the public. It can only go before the five of us. We can decide it, right? right? So it's what we have to do is decide what's reasonable. And, but it is, you know, if you want a tax increase because uh, um, whatever, pick a department. Council on Aging wants a capital project. Well, they just can't come up here and we say, okay, raise the raise 50% and let's give them that. So I think we do have to, you know, do our due diligence, put our, you know, be fiduciary responsible. And I would suggest that, uh, um, you know, I could probably stretch. I, I was thinking a 10% increase. I could be convinced to go to 15, but I think that that's uh, more than enough to triple the effort that we've put in for the last five or six years. All right. I'm gonna uh, make all right. Can I make a motion? You can make a motion. Yes, of course. I'm gonna. What did you say, Tony? What was your number? Fifteen <laughs> percent. Move the board of selectmen vote to increase water service and usage rates by fifteen percent for the base charge and the two lowest levels, and thirty-five percent at that utmost highest level, effective October sixteenth, twenty twelve. So I put the thirty-five on the highest. Looking for a second. <coughs> Going once. <laughs> Going you know, twice. I'll second it. I'll second it because I, I think we should at least have a vote made on and seconded. It. Discussion. Well, Discussion. Now, I, I just, Rick, I, I think if we're going to do it, um, see, one thing I'm curious about is the, um, you know, I know, Al, you had come in before the spring and last year about the, um, um, lawns and the irrigation systems and I realize they take up the bulk of it I just I'm concerned because I'm worried about large families kind of a regressive tax to larger families the the rationale behind it is if you use it you pay for it but I think if for some of the larger families who don't have the money I just I just see that as a regressive tax on them and I think again getting to the economics right now I just don't think this is the time for that 
Um, all right, so I'll, withdraw, I'll withdraw the motion. The I appreciate the collegiality in seconding it. But I'll withdraw the motion, seeing as motion has been withdrawn and the second has been withdrawn the also. Right. Sure. What another one, Joe? Another one. Will the board of selectmen vote to increase the water service and usage rates by 10 percent, effective October 16th, 2012? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion from the board. I agree with everything that's been said from Ann to every everyone in this room. We're doing something though. Something's better than nothing. And if we continue, like Tony has mentioned, this is at least you know doubling what we have been doing. So I commend these guys for all the time they've put in. That's it. A motion been made and seconded, Tony. Mm -hmm. a motion been made and seconded for a ten percent increase in the water rates. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Uh, opposed. The vote is four to one. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you for all the work that went into this. Uh, agenda item number 10. Special town meeting. I'm going to go through these articles. Al, uh, thanks for the envelope. <laughs> Jim, thanks. I'm going to go through these articles <clears throat> as they are as they will be presented as uh, most likely at town meeting. The one change I'm suggesting to the board would be on uh, the school article on the study. Due to the fact that that's number eight now and that could take place late in the evening. And there probably will be a lot of younger families there, school age parents. Suggest that we move that up to number three deal with it early and give those people an opportunity to, it's not to idea. ever leave early, but, <clears throat> but well. Okay. I, I don't have a problem with it, but I just want to caution everybody that if you do leave early, that someone can bring it up again later in the meeting and it can be voted again once. I'm not suggesting, yeah. Tony, that anyone leave early. All I'm suggesting No, no, I'm is, just saying. You know, that, 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 and there is a method to overcome that if someone wants to right. get up and move the attic. Right. But I think that it would get everyone out a couple of hours early for those people who are babysitters and et cetera. Okay? So tonight we'll do the same thing. We're going to go one, two, eight will become three, and then we'll go down through the rest of them. Okay? Is that all right? Sure. That makes okay. sense. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> Number one. So are we discussing them again? We're, or what we're, do we we're not, well, if you have any discussion you feel is pertinent, by all means, discuss it. We have discussed all of these articles, some of them uh, in greater length than others. Uh, well, seeing as I'm on a roll with uh, with motions, I'll move the yeah, board of selectmen so vote well. to <laughs> exactly move the board of selectmen vote to support Article One as presented, subject to any additional changes by town council and or the town administrator. I'll second that one. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 2. Same for 2. Same for 2. Support? Second. Article 2. Second. Now if we'll go to Article 8. And I can ask John. Two. Two. You got a vote. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And I can ask Brenda and John to come up and as most people are aware, we have a very important issue coming to town meeting, and, uh, and that's the first stage of a process that that would hopefully get us what to see that? a new uh, I couldn't find it. junior high school yes, and ultimately a new town hall and, and, and public buildings facility. So uh, I'll let John. Did you guys get this? We did get that. Thank you for that information. That's the information on. Uh, okay, on so, so what we're asking the um, Board of Selectmen for is Warren article in the amount of $750,000 to fund a feasibility study for the Gates Intermediate School. Um, what this means is that. Um, Providing we get MSBA approval to be invited into the eligibility period, which hasn't happened yet, but we anticipate that is coming. Um, once we get that, we have 270 days to move forward with a feasibility study. So the, basically the clock ticks on about a nine-month period. 
by moving this forward on November 13th, this enables us to be ready and able as soon as we get invited in, we'll be able to move forward much quicker. As you know, the Gates project is, is a major component of your entire master plan. So in moving this forward as quickly as possible is going to help this whole master plan move forward as quickly as possible. What essentially a feasibility study funds initially is an owner, you have to get an owner's project manager. You then hire an architect. And there are other costs such as site engineering, traffic studies, educational programming study and those amount okay they can they can vary in cost depending on the particular needs of the building depending upon the sites you're looking at but we have arrived at a figure of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars based on a, a we did a couple of things number one we went to the MSBA website and we pulled off recent building projects of middle schools, exclusively middle schools, not combination of middle high schools, but exclusively middle schools. And that's what you have before you. Um, so it ranges the high of you had a one point, you know, three million cost almost in, in Fall River. Um, and you had some, you know, low costs, you know, in the in the mid to sixes or so, mid to high sixes. We also spoke with some of the individual um, business managers and architects who were involved in these projects as well uh, to get their flavor on how well these costs were playing out. Um, you know, we talked to Hingham. Uh, we feel the Hingham, the Hingham costs were a little on the low side. Uh, there was a reason for that because the MSBA was very aggressive in getting Hingham started with a model school project. It's anticipated that some of Hingham's costs, such as the engineering and site costs, et cetera, will have to be rolled into the entire project. So when we looked at the entire uh, averages and, and ranges, we figured about $750,000 should cover our project. And keep in mind that this is reimbursable. With, if you're invited into the MSBA pipeline, this is reimbursable. Our reimbursement rate right now is somewhere around 40, almost 41 percent is where we were in our last projects. So you're looking at about 300,000 or so of this being reimbursed um, by MSBA. It could be even higher. If you go with a, a model school program, they could reimburse maybe up as much as 44, 45 percent. Hingham is getting reimbursed at a little, little over 44 percent. So, um, you know, it's certainly something that the town needs to do to get this, this ball rolling. You, you have to do this study. It's, it's, um, it's comprehensive. It takes you all the way to schematic design. I mean, what you end up with is basically this, this feasibility study will get you to the point where you will be able to decide what you need to build, where you need to build it, what size it needs to be, and pretty much what it's going to look like. Um, it's not going to get you, obviously, the total architectural plans to build it with, but it will get you pretty close to that, um, that point. So that's what we're looking for, um, is the $750,000 to be able to complete this study. Thank you. Discussion? Just, <clears throat> just one other comment. Um, as John mentioned, you know, we're not in the queue yet for the MSBA. Correct. If we don't get in the queue, we're not going to spend the money. Correct. So, and uh, is that the, the plan that you have there, John? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is yeah. a comprehensive report. This right. isn't just a three-page right. report. Right. They look at the whole town, your uh, population, your uh, educational systems, and all the models that you're using. So you get a you get a pretty good roadmap for your educational system for the for the upcoming years as right. well. It'll give you a good. I mean, basically, the educational planning part of this will give you a good roadmap for the next 15, 20, 25 years of your building use, what needs to happen, what your educational program looks like. And the important part of that is you, before you ever put a shovel in the ground, you want to know what your educational plan is going to be. You, know, you, want to build, you want to build a school, whatever that school is, that's going to meet your educational plan well into the future. And so this is, to Tony's point, a comprehensive study. And you're going to get a lot from this and really help, you know, it's not just going to look at just a gate. It's going to look at the entire system, K-12. to It's going to look at your enrollment. It's going to look at your future enrollment. And, um, you know, again, so you're going, to, you're going to get a full comprehensive look at what needs to be done. It's not just about the bricks and mortar. It's about the education that you're going to offer as well. And one of the point is, I've heard John talk about this, it's not optional. Yeah. You have to do it. Yep. If you don't do this step, you can't go to the next step, which is actually, you know, getting 
the building built and getting you know 41 to 44 percent back mm -hmm. on the whole construction of the whole building so this is step one of, of getting this done so if we're serious about building a new middle school you have to do this you, know? you can't go out and say I'm gonna shop it on my own and maybe I can get it for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's not the way it works right. you have to go to this step you have to do this <coughs> obviously it goes out to bid or what have you but uh, um, but this is step one of doing this plan Sean? Why wouldn't we look at a model school? We, we most definitely will. We will. All right, there's we, no options, we definitely so we, will. And so I think it, there's two reasons for that. One, it's less expensive. And two, you can do it faster. So for those reasons alone, we would look at a model school. And the model schools are beautiful. Hingham is building a model school based off the Whitman Hanson High School. Um, one of the great things about this is Hingham. They're a little bigger than us. But they're, they're a good example for us to follow. And they, so they're building the first model middle school. You know, Situate conceivably could be the second uh, model middle school in the state. So I think we would look in that direction. That doesn't, it may save you a little on this feasibility study in the end. You know, so it may not cost you 750 total. It may cost you a little less than that. Um, but again, the 750 is on the high end. What you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to have to come back to the right. town again and say, okay, we exceeded the 750, we need another $100,000. You know, we got to try to get it done for that $750,000 um, that we have because that's written, the article is written so it's reimbursable. That article was run through the MSBA. That's their language. That's what they expect you to do. It's a standalone warrant article and that's how, that's how you have to do it. Just one other question. Sure. It might be a stupid question. Is, does it get into site, um, you know, here or there? Yes. Or, all right. Okay. Yes, they will explore sites. And what, what can be a variable here is the more sites you explore, the more en site engineering costs you might incur because they have to do soil tests sure. and, you know, other right. types of tests to see, you know, where, you know, where is the best location and what's going to be the environmental impact locating it in one site versus another. And then you could get into traffic, that, right? That you know, right so the whole the whole issue. If you were to put put a building, another building, say down on, on the high school where the high school site is in that general vicinity, n now you're going to run into some traffic issues. All right, so you're going to have to have a traffic study done of how do you move traffic in and out of there, and you may have to change entrances and so forth. So, um, site can site can really be the variable that can push these costs higher. You know, it's it's. I mean, Hingham knew where they wanted to go. They knew the site. They knew exactly where they wanted to be. We think we know where we want to be, but it may, they will look at alternatives. Okay. Good. And they'll look at, you know, and the other piece Good. of this, too, is, is, is they will explore, and they, we're, we're obligated to do this, they will explore renovation. That's, you know, that's a, a piece that they have to look at. Now, I think, again, everybody can, can kind of figure that looking at renovating that building is, a, is you know, a very, very expensive proposition. And you're not going to change. You're going to have a 1916 structure that's going to look a little different, a little prettier, but it's still going to be a 1916 structure. And you're going to try to retrofit a 21st century education into that. It just doesn't work. We're going to have you stand up and tell those people that. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. I, Are you yeah. hearing it? So. Yeah, yeah. Further discussion from the board. One more. Time well, frame, if, if all goes well? Optimistically, you can get this done in four years. That's the, that's the best case scenario. Just the, not no, just no. The, the, feasibility yeah, study, the feasibility study takes about three to four months. Okay. So what we would wait for is you get the vote, then we wait for get invited into the eligibility period. Right. That's when we go forward with the feasibility study. So hopefully that, that may even come the next day after. MSBA has a meeting uh, the day after uh, on, on November 14th. So we could get invited in as early as November 14th or we can get it invited in, in January. Once we get the green light, it's about three to four months, but, but that's when you actually have the people in place. So you have to put it out to bid, right. you have to get the owner's project manager, you know, you have to put a building committee together, you have to get an, an architect. So there are pieces you have to do, it's gonna take a little time, because there's a process to that. Once you get those people, then it's about three to four months of actual study to do. I have to ask this question. Well, we have our building committee. Uh, well, they, you have to have a specific, one other thing about MSBA um, is they are very specific as to who's on this committee and you can't vary too much from that. Um, so most communities don't have a building committee in place that mirrors 
what MSBA is looking for okay. for a building committee. So not that some of those people can't serve on this school building committee because okay. they probably will qualify. But you may have to fill it with some other all right. people. Okay, Paul's nodding. All right, okay, it's just That's exactly been what we done. Had to do last time. Been, yeah. All right, okay, been down, been there, done it. Yep. Thank you. For the discussion, Ann. Thank you, Ann Verbon, Penny Chris Grove. Uh, years ago, there was a feasibility study of space needs, two of them, as a matter of fact, that had recommended that grades seven and eight go to the high school and that gates be turned into town hall, etc. That was 1992. So here we are, 20 odd years later, a, uh, an accreditation review of Situate High School back in the mid 90s recommended that central administration and everything else that's up there that had nothing to do with Situate High School be removed. So I'm wondering if rather than, and I know this isn't popular, rather than building a new middle school, that we look into the feasibility of adding 10 classrooms or whatever it takes to Situate High School so that you have grades 7 through 12, somewhat separate from each other, which will bring in true JV, honors programs, wonderful scenario without building a whole new building, which would then enable the town to take over gates, renovate that for town hall, senior center, etc., without the expense of a huge new building. Thank you, and I think that discussion uh, will be well placed as this agenda item, as this item moves on, and the discussion on the actual uh, article, it would be a perfect time to offer that alternative. And one of the things about a feasibility study, uh, to Ann's point, is they will look at all options. So the option that she references, moving additional grades into the high school, might be explored because they're going to look at all options in this study. It's not just saying, okay, we need to build a six through eight middle school here. That's one option. But it might be moving some. I mean, your high school is big. You've got a lot of space there. The early childhood takes up part of it. Central office takes up part of it. But you have a lot of space there. It's a big, it's a big building. John mentioned at one uh, meeting we had earlier that, that the state could come in uh, and suggest that we build a new high school. That's correct. <laughs> and, and we're talking about junior highs here, but they could come in and after studying everything, population and, and Roman growth or decline, whatever the case might be, they could do that. So a lot of this is in their hands. They could very well come up with some plan that we haven't even thought about. That's right. They could so take. They could look at your five through eight and say that those are your biggest grades. Put the five through eight in your existing high school because that would fit, and your high school would serve that population well. And they say build a new nine through twelve high school. Could happen. That could happen. Cool. What if that's why we do the study? That's right, exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. And if they recommended something like that, something we really haven't explored, mm -hmm. would we have to go that route? Not necessarily. I mean, what if they're partners with you. So, you know, they want to partner with you. They want to get the best for the town. But what they want to do with you is they want to make sure that you explore all of your options. They want to make sure that you do thorough, thorough study here, that you look at your enrollment um, over the next 10 to 20 years project that out, look at what can be buildable in town, look at where your, your enrollment has been going. They want to make sure that money, the Commonwealth's money is well spent, that they're not empty seats, empty classrooms. Yeah. You build a new building and you're sitting there with en empty classrooms. So they will, they will press you in that regard to say, look, yeah, you want to build a six or eight middle school, but you're, you're going to have, you know, 10 empty classrooms in a high school. So how are you going to deal with that? You know, that's empty space and that costs money. So that's, that's how they partner with it. They won't tell you the absolute way to go, but they will, they will certainly lead you in that direction. And there are some communities, you know, certainly communities that, they, that, that are small, they forced to regionalize with other communities before they were allowed to build. So there are, they, they, can, they can exert pressure because they hold the purse strings and they can exert pressure. You know, if you want that 40 to 45% reimbursement, which everybody does, you're gonna have to, you know, partner with them. Is, is, that a, is that a viable mo model, though, John, that you mentioned of five through eight? Have <coughs> that's, one, that? that's one model. There's certainly five through eight middle schools out there. There are. Um, you know, and it, it's something for, you know, the, the study to explain and look at 
and to say, is that an option? Is that a viable option? It may or may not be. Um, you know, one of the things one of the things about Situate is that even though you have a high school that's built for about 1,100 and you have about 850 students in there now, you also have a pretty good population of students who go to private schools from right. this community. And about 150 students or more are out there in private schools. What happens if half of those students came back? You know, you got to have room for them as well. So, you know, it, those are the kinds of things that um, that you have to plan for and um, and anticipate. And build, you make sure you have enough space you, because the last thing you want to do is build a new building and find out, uh oh, <laughs> we're cramped. We've got to put temporaries on. Yeah. You know, nobody wants that. Rich? And, and to that point, John, uh, about five through eight, that, that's a sort of a, an educational decision, a vision decision. And part of this study is making you sit down and deciding what the vision is for the education of the students. That's correct. Like it, just out of curiosity, is there one in the South Shore? I'm just five um, through eight. I never heard of um, so I was curious. Small. Yeah, smaller communities generally will go five through eight. Okay. Um, most, most the, the the number one model of middle school is is six, six through, through eight. eight. The number one model of elementary schools is K to five. Gotcha. Thank you. For That's discussion from the board. If not, we'll take a motion. 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 <coughs> Second. Actually, Article Three. Uh, it will be hopefully article three. Eight, 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 eight. Move, move this article. Uh, we'll get article. Mo motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Presentation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Article. Next article. Four. Four. Contain for water wastewater. Move it as written. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Uh, yep, all in favor. Aye. I'm looking at Article Aye. 3. Oh, oh, you want to go back to Yeah, well, yeah. We might, I don't want to skip it all. Well, I thought that was. Okay. So, move Article 3. Which will now be Article 8. Well, it's, it's probably, let, let's go by the, let's call it as it is, Article 3. And then we'll make the change later. Move Article 3. All right. Yeah. Second. So this. Okay, Article 3 has been, uh, motion been made to support and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 4. Move as written. Second. Yep. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 5. Move. Article 5. Second. And seconded by Sean. All in favor? Aye. Article Aye. 6. Um, Squash the Pond Sewer Project. Um, move as written. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, article 7. Move Article 7. This retained earnings, waterways. Okay, retained. Good. And the second? Second. Second. Article 8, we've just done. Article 9. We got all in favor? We do that. Do we do that all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 9. Move Article 9 as written. Right, so start the kick. Uh, second. How did we decide to. Oh, go ahead. I thought you said. Trisha said 100,000. 100,000 or 1,000? I thought she said 100. She did. She said over 1,000. She changed to 100. Changed to 100,000? Yep. Yeah. I think it was changed to 100,000. Yeah. Where's that coming from? I think that's the uh, seawall money, isn't it? So we're just going to transfer it. Is that what she said? Transfer the money that wasn't spent? Correct. Special account. Correct. She's so got it here as uh, recommended. Recommended from for free cash. But that is not described in the article. Just so you know. So yeah, it is. It's right in there. It says a hundred thousand dollars. No, but it doesn't or say it says actually or a greater or a lesser sum. Right. It doesn't say it's gonna come from free cash in the article. Maybe because that it's maybe the seawall stuff closes out to free cash and then that correct. Yeah. Well we'll get that clear. It says greater or lesser, so could we could change it to whatever we want? Yep. On the floor. <coughs> Motion's been Move made. Second. 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 Aye. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Article 10. Move Article, Article 10. Maintenance. Move Article 10. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. 11. Move Article 11 as written. Second. Uh, this is the, the asking the general court to include uh, a voluntary checkoff for the Veterans Advisory Assistance Fund. Motion made a second on 11. 
Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 12? Actually, no. That one's deleted. Article 12 we did not include in the special town meeting warrant as per our discussion because right. that's a uh, zoning um, bylaw. So all right, 13. Move article 13. Second. All in favor? That's the water one? Yes. That's the water. Aye. Um, is it possible to make that change that we, um, that I distributed? Well, number 12. What did you send? No, not 12. I think um, she's talking. The water resources article? That's 13. Oh, yep. sorry. Okay. So what change was that? Uh, that was a change to add some language that the EP wanted that said that um, there could not be a variable process in the zone A and zone 2 sub-districts. Yeah, yeah. So, so. And that, um, Are you in the resource one? Yes, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Okay. I didn't know. Um, you might want to sit, Laura, why don't you sit down here so people can hear you? Because okay. they're going to think, what are we talking about here? <laughs> in the TV, people in TV, people, people they want to know what's going on. Overall, anyway. So, um, with the, the emails back and forth with the people at DEP, there was one thing they wanted to change in Section 520.6. Uh, which is the design and operation guidelines where it goes into um, you know a lot of guidelines that apply to the whole district and they want things to be stricter in the zone A and the zone 2 sub-districts so the language that would be added says within the zone A and zone 2 sub-districts where the activities subject to these guidelines are more strictly regulated by sections 520.4 B or 524.C above the stricter regulation shall apply and the variance process provided in subparagraph F below shall not be permitted. So That's do we have to make a motion with, with that, that in it? I think if you could just refer to that being added to it, the, the handout that you have, um, I think it's with a, a memo from the So I'd move Article 13 as written and amended by the additional material that Ms. Harbottle just referenced. Second. Motion to make in second. Does that work? Does that work for everybody? Can read it. Maybe. Let's read it. Yeah. Read it. Go ahead. Um, it says this. Um, Within the Zone A and Zone 2 subdistricts, where the activities subject to these guidelines are more strictly um, regulated by sections 520.4 capital B or 520.4 capital C above, the stricter regulation shall apply and the variance process provided in subparagraph F below shall not be permitted. Um, and then I think it's the, the, and that's it. That clears it up. There you go, folks. Second. <laughs> Motion to be <made> second. <laughs> Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Think uh, Kim. Could I have clarification on Article 12 that is being taken off of the published warrant? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. I believe we discussed, we discussed that in our last meeting. And not published yet, right? Excuse me? Not published yet. No, it has not been published, but we're sending it to the paper this Thursday, so. Okay. The um, is it the uh, advisory notes, Kim? That the advisory notes, whatever the companion uh, has, it has it deleted. So, okay. just to thank you. All right. I think the next one is the liquor license fees that have not been addressed for a number of years, to say the least. It's been the right of number eleven. Uh, I think one of them is done. Considerable amount of work and researching comparable towns, etc. Uh, as far as what they charge for liquor license fees, and giving you a giving us a uh, detailed report of maybe a dozen or so towns uh, in a different type of license. So, uh, what's being asked of us is to, for the most part, increase most of these fees at, at different levels. I know you've been time to read this, not over it. Any comments? <coughs> Makes sense well, to me, it's a very nice comparison. Thank you. Oh. I mean, some of them are 
Actually, Kim, if you can just explain the restaurant, all liquor, restaurant, uh, wine and beer. Well, RDT is retail. retail. So that's retail and then the club and VFW in you know, one day. Mm -hmm. So I want to just read them. You're proposing that we move the restaurant all liquor license from 1500 a year to 1600 a year. The average of the 10 communities that you showed was 1700 a year. You want to vote one at a time or? No, I think we can. Well, we voted all together. Yeah, vote all together. The wine and beer is going from 600 to 850. The average is 1,000. The uh, retail is going from 1,700 to 1,750. The retail wine, beer and wine is 600 to 800. The club is going from 600 to 900. How many of those do we have? Club licenses, uh, I think four or five. Where are they? So that's the What's VFW. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm the not VFW Columbus. Is not one. Um, club licenses are um, Citroen Harvard Yacht Club, uh, oh, oh. Citroen oh. Country Club, uh, Haverly Country Club. Probably uh, the, um, um, the, uh, the Racket and Tennis Club. Gotcha. <laughs> the VFW from 200 to 500. Mm -hmm. That's one that I thought was a lot. <coughs> it was one of those, right? Mm -hmm. We do have one. We're just uh, we're considered like we're considerably lower than other VFWs, um, so that's why percentage-wise. And then the one day from 25 to 50. I mean, the two that I looked at, and now that I understand the club one, I don't know. I mean, I, I think the VFW one, you know, going up from 200 to 500 means they don't have any. VFW, that's a Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like they have two. You're driven by that? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I know where you're coming from, but, but it's just. The 10 town average is $633, and we're still. But there's only five that they took into consideration. Okay, but the five, the five averages, the other towns are 750, 800, 500, 600, so we're, we're would be equal with the lowest, which happens to be Marshfield. So we'd be bringing our rate up to the lowest other in our comparative neighbor, just for I think we data inclusion. And just split it some way. And pointing out, uh, following what Tony said, I hear what he's saying about two to, to uh, 500 as a, it's an increase. I think we also have to kind of think about making a, a, a level playing field for all the other bars in town. You know, that's basically what it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bar. It's a food here. It's not unlike many other bars in town. Um, I just don't see that much of a difference, I guess. As long as it be a loaded club versus such and such bar, the, what they do is pretty much the same as everybody else. But I, I, can see, I can see an argument it's going up 150%. Then the argument is, but they're the lowest for the most part, based on for for bar <laughs> six of one half dozen of them. I'll go I'll go with the way the board wants to go, and I could go up. I could I could say you can reduce it to four hundred if you want. I doesn't. I'll split the difference somewhere in the middle. Right. I make a motion that we move ahead, all the rate changes, with the one exception of changing the VFW from five hundred to three seventy five. Second. Second. Seventy-five. The motion was made and seconded. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Kim, good job. That's really helpful. Thanks, and just, oh, just, just so that people understand, these rates haven't been increased in over ten years, so it's not like we're increasing it. it this has been like a ten-year review, so that's why we're reviewing it ten years. And when does it go into effect, Kim? Tomorrow. Is it a calendar year? January. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh. 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 But they don't have to renew until January. January, yeah. Well, they, they'll be renewing over the next month or so. You right. Don't, you don't vote it until December 4, January, but it needs to be put into effect now so that you can send out what the rate changes are to all renewal. Right. And we don't charge them starting tomorrow. Right. Comes the next time they come in, the process right. Right. Yeah, I mean, everyone has their license now. Yeah. Item 13 uh, is a discussion, a new vote on conservation land. Uh, two parcels. Do you remember? about a month ago, 
we will uh, ask to accept on behalf of the town of uh, two parcels of land if we accept it. We got well, we can assign them you first. Sign it, I think, Joe. Did I skip your sign? Yeah. We sign the. Uh, uh, sign for the town. All right. Uh, Brooklyn Pie years. I'll do that. My pretty budget. I'll do that. Jump in, boys. Kind of like. <laughs> you don't. Uh, <laughs> But one suggestion I was going to say is instead of having everybody kind of getting up and getting down, getting up, getting down, maybe we just, Joe, if you want to take the first two or three, and then somebody takes the next three and the next three, and I'll take, I'll it's take so much easier. Why don't I just take the first three? Looking right. like um, good. Okay. Next three. I'll take four, five, six. Four, five, six. Sean Harris. I'll do the next three. Seven, eight, nine. And out. Tony. And I'll do uh, 11, 12. twelve. I'll do the next three. Rick, you're lucky. Uh, I'll do 10, too. I'll do 7 through 10. All right. 12, 12 isn't in there, remember? Oh, that's right. Never mind, then. All right. So John has... 10, 11, and... 13. 13. 13. 13. Done. Okay. Uh, now I'll get into the conservation. As you remember, a month or so ago, we discussed uh, accepting the behalf of the town two parcels of land uh, that people generally generously offering to give to us, we, we, we decided to accept it, but rather than accept it in the name of the Conservation Commission, we, we accepted it, uh, attempted to accept it in the name of the town. We found out since that uh, when you accept something in the name of the town, it has to go to town meeting. It has to be accepted by town meeting. Uh, whereas if you accept it uh, on behalf of the, of the uh, Conservation Commission, it's done immediately. These requests by these people had sort of a time frame issue on them. They wanted to get it done as soon as possible. Uh, having said that, in order to uh, fulfill more or less what they what, what their intention was or what they wanted, I'm putting this on the agenda to see if the board will change its vote and accept it in the name of the conservation commission. We're getting it done. Yep. Right. Yes, Want a motion? Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept a donation of land, parcel 32-1-14-F-R, uh, Dermot property, on behalf of the Town of Situate to be placed in the care and custody of the Conservation Commission. Second. Motion to be made and second. Discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 And the next one is to move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept a donation of land, Parcel 21-3-2-0, on behalf of the town of Situate, to be placed in the care and custody of the Conservation Commission. Second. Uh, motion made. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. And that's a Laverty property. Uh, thank you. That's done. Thank you both for the donations. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Norton? Yes. Um, if I can administratively, uh, I apologize. I meant to have the board rescind their vote on the McDermott Good property. Point. And I apologize. So if you wouldn't mind, I, we can insert that earlier. To vote move that we rescind, rescind our earlier vote on the McDermott property. Yes. Please. Second. Thank you. Motion to move the second. Aye. With that issue. Okay? Thank you. Uh, Ava? Aye. 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 Opposed? The next is the agenda item 14, the Barbara Pearson Award. We were very honored to, to be nominated and have received the Barbara Pearson Award put forward by the North Carolina River Commission uh, for, for our efforts in, in restoring Herring to the Town of Situate. Throw at that award. It just indicates what a great job our water department and our whole DPW is doing in terms of uh, improving the water situation in the town of Situate for the past couple of years and now it's starting to be recognized. So I just want to say that. Comments? Great stuff. It really is. It's, uh, great stuff. Uh, I don't think we need any motion or anything on that, do we, Kim? No, there was a little... Uh, a lot of a, a very small... Agreed. 
Well, I think you just pretty much said it, Mr. Well, Chair, but the North and South River Watershed Association Board recently voted to award their Barbara Pearson Award at the Town of Situates Water Department for their efforts in working to restore flows in Herring to the first Herring Brook. They're thrilled to provide this recognition and hope you can come to the NSRWA's annual meeting on Friday, November 2nd at 7 p.m. to accept this award. Annual meeting is at South Shore Natural Science Center in Norwell. Margaret Kearns and Sarah Grady will be presenting the scientific research that has supported this effort as the main presentation for the evening's program. And uh, we've heard from uh, Jim and Al and others that are um, certainly delighted to be accepting this award. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Uh, next item is uh, the appointments. We've got the applicants tonight for many uh, positions of the public uh, building commission on the task force. Now it's time to make those appointments as well as the public building commission appointment that we have. All right? Sure. For a motion? Please. Will the Board of Selectmen appoint the following individuals to the Public Facilities Master Plan Steering Committee? Richard Ebert, William Johnson for the School Committee, Richard Mitchell, Council on Aging, Mary Allen Gaziano, Board of Trustees, William Blake and Mark Glancy, Recreation, Victor Milligan, Economic Development Committee, William Limbacher, Planning Board, Jacqueline Carr, Public Building Commission, Kevin Kelly, Ex Officio Member of Facilities Director. Jeff Dugan from the Commission on Disabilities. As far as, as, far as the uh, uh, at-large applicants, Jennifer Morrison, Paul Scott, Karen Pritchard, Craig Mutter, and Doug Anderson. Second. Motion to make the second of those. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? How many did we have? Fifteen total, was that? Fifteen, we got fifteen, yeah. Was the maximum that was suggested? Uh, Move the board of selectmen appoint Michael Hager, Hager, to the Hager. public Hager yep. to the public building commission. Second. All right, Michael. Motion be made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. Did we vote on the first one? Did. Yes. yes. You yes. voted in favor of it. I did. Yeah. I, did. I thought I heard no over there. Who is it? <laughs> Move the board of selectmen vote to appoint Rob McCurry and David Smith as Caleb Kit Cole. Liaisons to the Community Preservation Act Committee. Second. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for you to say. Uh, motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Will the Board of Selectmen appoint the following election workers per the recommendation of the town clerk Lisa Fenton, Walter Scott Roberts, Julia Chapman, Richard Judge, Kathleen Judge. And uh, Ellen Kelly and Christopher Maraki. Second. Motion remains second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Amen. Just a quick comment. That's a name, Scott Roberts, who used to be at all of our meetings here. We miss you, Scott, if you're watching. Yep. Come back to a meeting. Say hello. Uh, 16. Uh, two, this, first of all, under other business here, we have one announcement uh, that the uh, Board of Health has lifted the ban on outside activities because the frost criteria have been reached. So as of today, Citroen Board of Health is lifting the ban on outside activities near or after dusk. NOAA Weather Service has determined that their frost criteria has been met in all areas but Suffolk County and the Cape and Islands. Therefore, the threat of Tripoli and West Nile virus has been greatly reduced. Additionally, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the regular session minutes for August 7, 2012. Second. Uh, discussion on a favor? Aye. Aye. Move the board of select and vote I to accept. I recuse myself on those minutes because I wasn't present, Kim. Move the board of select and vote to accept the executive session minutes for August 7th, 2012. Second. Discussion on a favor? Aye. 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 Kim, Kim, I'll just recuse again on that one, too. Okay. Thanks. Other, business, other people, other business? Other people, other business. Yeah, I've got. Um, I'm not going to reel back on that uh, music thing, although I haven't finished with that. I've, I've still got more to deal with that. But um, I had a really nice, um, ran into a, a person, a woman, who had um, buttonholed me at one of the buildings and said, uh, you know, I want to pass on some, um, um, some news and information. You know, when I go down to the transfer station, uh, the gentlemen and the people there are more than helpful helping me out. Uh, they take the items out of her car, they help her, you know, uh, dispose of it. They're very nice. And she said she wanted to give recognition to the uh, the people at the transfer station and saying thank you because they don't get thanked enough. And so I wanted to share that with everybody in, in TV land. 
Um, I had the, the uh, benefit of, of being today at the Safe Routes to School. Uh, there was a ribbon cutting, and I have to tell you, you know, um, this was at Hadley School, and the biggest benefit goes to all the kids who are going to be walking to school and utilizing the, the sidewalk that is on Hollett Street and uh, utilizing the bike path and the sidewalks. And um, it was a great event. It was well attended. And again, this could not have happened but for people in our town who took an interest to try to do something good. And they did it for themselves. I say themselves for the town, for the people and the children. And uh, um, you know, it's a great, a great event, well attended. So I just wanted to share and, with the board. And obviously, you have to mention Barbara Lyon. I mean, she spearheaded that that whole federal funding initiative, so. Barbara Lyling. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. You want to go first? No, no, I'm good, Tom. Um, sorry, I got one more. I'm sorry. That's sorry, good. I just forgot. I rented you know, a lawnmower. The Situate Chamber of Commerce put on um, uh, Fall for Situate, and if anybody went, it was a huge event up in North Situate. It brought back a lot of people, kids, children, great event, and um, I presume it will probably happen annually so everybody should be very proud of it um, great event so I want to commend the town and the people for going out it was a great day uh, just also mention that sorry no shut up that was first on my list too I was there it was great it was uh, very well attended it was a beautiful day the police officers did a great job getting the traffic in and out um, I can't remember who it was but uh, they did a great job and made it very safe there were hay rides and uh, a bunch of kids I don't know how there were hundreds and hundreds of people there they ran out of chowder so next, so, yeah, so they got to get, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, I only got, I only got like five, five tries of each. Um, so uh, was next Sean, year. Was Sean there before you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was a great event, a beautiful day. Hopefully they, they continue to do it, as uh, John said. Um, as the congressman mentioned earlier, I wanted to thank the people that put on that Chris Heron um, presentation. Um, uh, Amory Finkel um, and a bunch of sponsors, the basketball groups of the Little League, um, uh, the Basketball Association, the Boosters, and a bunch of different groups got together and funded that. And I, uh, Chief, were you there? I yeah. believe the uh, Police Relief Association funded the afternoon, the actual in-school uh, event right. that day. So. And then they did another event. I mean, my son was there. He, was, he, he thought it was wonderful. And then at night they did it, and a bunch of hundreds of parents went and watched it as well. So most of you, some of you may have seen it on ESPN where he did the, uh, the presentation there, a Fall River um, basketball player who you know, unfortunately had a drug addiction and it really took his uh, basketball career in, in the wrong direction. But now he's turning around and he's out preaching to the kids and it was a great, uh, great event. Um, what else did I want to say? What else did my wife tell me to say? Um, oh, there was a walk to school uh, event that just happened the other day it was great. It was uh, you know, the kids wa walked from uh, the par parking lot at um, St. Mary's up to school, and I think that's. Uh, did they do it over at? Uh, that wasn't the Hadley one. I mean Jenkins, but that wasn't what the Hadley one. No, was. no, no. Yeah. that was just. But that was a, a great event as well. Um, another thing is homecoming is this weekend. Football games at two o'clock at the high school, unless they change it because of the Triple E stuff. Did they change it? Yeah. It's back to Friday night. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it, right now it's two o'clock. You're nodding. It it's Friday. Okay, so scratch that. It is back to Friday night, homecoming, um, at the football uh, stadium over there. So that'll be great. And uh, that's all I have for now. Uh, just want to <laughs> recognize one uh, person out in the audience. My daughter Melissa's here, and uh, been taking notes. <laughs> I thought she might ask a couple of questions, but she didn't. Uh, maybe next time she comes. Just wanted to thank her for coming, paying attention. See you. Maybe the most important thing we've done tonight is recognize you. Yeah, that's Rick Merrill. I'd like to thank Police Chief Ryan Stewart for serving as Acting Town Administrator. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Move to adjourn. Well, 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 I've got one more thing. Just oh, sorry. No, I don't think Do we have another meeting before the end of the month? Can yes, we do. On the 30th. Well, I'll say it anyways. Uh, 31st, uh, downtown Chamber of Commerce is going to have um, the Halloween uh, candy distributed from 4 to 5.30. So keep that in mind for uh, for everybody. Anyway, I'll mention it. Sorry. I, I just want to mention two things uh, I think that are important. One, I attended the Board of Health meeting last night and watched the 
uh, meeting prior to that. I, I think, and it was Reverend Foreman, of Reverend, Reverend, both meetings were Reverend Foreman, I think there may be a perception among some residents of Third Cliff uh, that the town does not support their concerns. And I just want to publicly say now, and I'm sure the board will agree with me, we want to make sure uh, what's done in the future, we want to make sure that it's done right. Uh, whatever comes out of this uh, study, if that's where it goes, we are fully supportive of it. We are interested. We do not want to do anything that harm anybody. So the town is 100% behind the concerns uh, of the residents, and, and we will uh, continue to be. So it's this misconception that maybe the town is not behind them, or the town um, uh, does not support them is not true. We don't support it. We don't not support. It. We just want to want to let them know that we're well aware of their concerns and uh, we support whatever's going to be done to try to solve those concerns. Secondly, uh, maybe another issue. We've had two issues recently that, uh, and this is a very good example. Sometimes the board does not act as quickly on an item, whether it be July 3rd uh, or this whole Hummer Rock Beach issue as some people would like us to act, some uh, publications would like us to act. I think tonight was a good example of why we don't act too quickly sometimes. Why the board likes to gather more information, uh, fully understand the issues, and then make a decision. If that means uh, a decision takes two weeks longer, so be it, it takes two weeks longer, but it's done right. It's not done knee-jerk as, as uh, could happen if we try to do it uh, without enough information. So I just want to say that and make sure everyone understands that sometimes we uh, may delay an item or postpone an item. For the most part, we're doing just to get more information so we can make a correct decision. And we hope uh, people don't continue to rush to judgment uh, and be too critical of us for that. Next. Move to adjourn at 9.01 p.m. after signing documents if necessary. Second. Motion made a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.